I'd like to call the Plan Commission meeting to order on Tuesday, September 28th, 2021 at 5.30. Janelle, could you please take roll call? Bertle? Here. Zoski? Okay, here. here. Gretzmacher? Here. Shumway? Here. And Schmitz? Here. And Bell will be a little bit late. Comments and correspondence and concerns from the public. Is there anybody joining us tonight who would like to comment on a non-agenda issue? Not look like it. Okay. And did staff have any correspondence? There was one email that was received from Denise Fuller and that was included in the packets. Okay. In her email, Ms. Fuller states that every time she passes the building that used to house Shopco, she finds herself wishing we still had a variety store in the village. She was recently discussing this issue with a woman who owns a variety store in Milwaukee. And that woman suggested that village officials consider initiating a co-op so that a number of different items could be sold in one location. If village officials would like to consider allowing such a business concept to be utilized in the village, the woman Ms. Filler spoke with indicated that she and some other individuals that she works with would be happy to meet with the Planning Commission. Thank you, Janelle. But that's it. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I so move. Second. M motion by Grutzmacher, second by Zashki. All in favor, respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from August 24th as presented? So moved. Motion by Schmitz. Second. Second by Grutzmacher. All in favor, respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from August 30th as presented? So moved. Motion by Zashki. Second. Second by Schmitz. All in favor, respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item number one, public hearing on a request from representatives of Door County Medical Center that village officials approve a proposed certified survey map that will combine parcel number 18100083128121K that has been an assigned an address of 2345 Canterbury Lane and parcels number 18100083128121L1, 18100083128121L2, and 18100 0832128121L. Bo? Yep, so uh, this is just coming from the last plan commission meeting request for an official CSM. It's gonna be combining the three lots into one. They'll all be B1 general business. And if approved, we'll be discussing the uh, plans at a future agenda item in this meeting. Okay, at 533, I will open up the public hearing. Is there anybody joining us that would like to speak for or against? The combining of these four lots. Betsy, can you state your name and your address, please, for the record? You have to unmute yourself. Uh, my name is Betsy Rogers, and I am um, among the lay leadership of St. Luke's uh, Episcopal Church, which is directly across Canterbury Lane from, uh, from this property. My address in Sister Bay is 11427 Beach Road. Um, I, I am here actually looking for a little information. I don't know whether this meeting is going to consider the actual plans for this property or if this is only a matter of combining these parcels. This first agenda item is only the public hearing for combining the parcels. Um, and then we will get to, I think, agenda item number three. I don't have it right in front of me on my screen right now. Right. Then we will be um, addressing the plans for the entire project and all that it entails. Okay. And I would have an opportunity to ask questions at that time. 
not guaranteed, but possibly yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't, we don't have any objection to combining the parcels. So, okay. and I don't think we have any objection to the, to the project, but we just have a couple of questions. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can't answer them before you have to ask them. Great. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else that would care to speak for or against? Denise, uh, Pat Skowicki with Grafe. Um, we're the consulting firm that prepared the CSM and will also be uh, uh, available for questions when it comes to the site plan review, uh, Betsy, for your information. Um, but uh, yeah, this is really just part and parcel, uh, no plan words, but to that project and is essential, obviously, for uh, the development, as you'll see when we get through that agenda item. Um, multiple lots um, and given the uh, improvements that entail the project for the clinic, um, that property is needed to combine um, and eliminate interior lot lines, basically. So um, this is a critical piece of that project's overall scope. But I'm available for questions both for this and for that project when we get to that agenda item. Thank you, Patrick. Jim, did you have your hand raised? Yes, thank you. Um, I guess it's hard to separate the plans from the request to combine the parcels. So um, my concern is mainly about the um, um, amount of traffic that combining the parcels which leading to the plans could lead to when they're talking about 167 parking spaces and up to 300 occupants. I think that's an incredible amount of traffic on that one small road. Um, Jim Selinski, by the way, across the street, on the property across the street on Canterbury Lane. So that's my, my concern. Um, I know we're not supposed to talk specifically about the plans. The other is about the height uh, that it seems to be exceeding the code, but um, you know, combining those parcels will lead any developer to have the ability to create a very large uh, development. And I don't think we have standards in the code around what maximum size of clinics, for instance, would be. I went through it and uh, my request would be that we put a take a pause on this and respectfully ask the, the committee to develop standards around things like clinic, because if it could be 60,000 or 30,000, could it be 60,000 square feet or could it be 90,000 square feet? I'm not seeing that in the code. So those are my concerns. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, hearing none, I will close the public hearing at 5.38 and uh, turn it over to any discussion um, that the Plan Commission may wish to have on the combining of these parcels. I have no issues with the zoning aspect of combining the parcels of this agenda item. No issues. No issues. Okay, hearing none, um, would there be then a motion to recommend to the village board that uh, the CSM uh, be moved forward? I so move. Motion by Grutzmacher. Second. Second by Zashke. All in favor respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number two, discussion regarding the zoning permit application that was submitted by Roman Kalak, if that's how you pronounce it, I'm sorry, Roman, on behalf of the Birchwood Lodge, which establishment is located at 10571 State Highway 57, as they would like to convert the third floor storage area on the lodge into a two bedroom, two bath employee housing unit. Bo? Yep, you kind of took the words right out from my description there. Uh, this is a simple change of use request that's turning a storage room up on the third floor to a two bedroom, two bathroom, seasonal employee housing unit. Um, in my discussions with Bayland, who submitted the application, um, there was no change to the parking because the seasonal employees don't require via, uh, cars for vehicle parking. They usually use bicycles traffic. So it's coming to the plan commission for that change of use request. Is somebody from Bayland on the phone call yeah, to answer questions? Uh, hi, yeah, this is Dave Phillips with Bayland Billings. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. 
Okay, it looks pretty straightforward, but on, I'm looking at page um, 28 of our packet, which shows um, the new drawings um, for the unit. And I was trying to, with the photo, with the exterior photo that was included in the packet that you know showed what unit this was, I could not quite understand how the windows in each bedroom was going to lay out according to the photo that we received. Yeah, one of the nice things on the, the, the plan that we designed is we're incorporating two existing windows that are on either side of the tall, uh, sloped roof covering the pool and we, okay. incorpor we incorporated those both into the bedroom so we do not have to change the exterior whatsoever okay so I just couldn't see that one window because it's on the other side okay right, that's correct. what I thought but wasn't wasn't 100 sure okay uh looks great glad they're uh using this space to address some um, housing issues I had no no other questions or concerns. Anyone else? I think my question is for Bo with the wetland notice and acknowledgement isn't completed. Generally, we have a completed information package. Is that in the office somewhere? Um, no, we can just have them when we, uh, before we approve the zoning permit application, I'll just make sure Dave or the representative fill, fills out that sheet before we approve it. I have a question for Bo. Um, is there, I, I can't tell from the drawings, is there something additional that needs to be done as far as an exit or a fire escape, um, considering that these will be people living there and sleeping there now instead of just a storage closet? No additional change for an exit. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments or a motion would be in order? I move to accept. Motion by Schmitz. Second. Second by Zashki. Any further discussion? All those in favor respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Was, was that an opposed or a? Mary Kay? That was an I. Okay. I'm just, I'm not used to having incomplete packages slip through and um, go to vote, but now we have a precedent, so. Okay, duly noted. Motion carried. Item number three, upon approval of agenda item number one, discussion regarding a request from representatives of Door County Medical Center that the plan commission review and grant preliminary approval of the site plan, the grading and erosion control plans, the utility plan, the landscaping plan, the construction detail sheets, the floor plans and building elevation drawings, the lighting plan and the electrical system and mechanical plans, as well as stormwater management plan that have been submitted for the Door County Medical Center Sister Bay Clinic that will be constructed on the lot that is the subject of the CSM. Yes. Bo? Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't a little, there we go, a little feedback. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so in my report, I put the details of what was included in the packet there. Um, I know that we had a couple of regarding parking so when we get to that spot we can discuss parking there a little bit um there's a little confusion and uh, mistake in the reports um about the pharmacy square footage and the total uh required spaces there and i know there was a question about the total spaces included that was shown in in the packet itself um patrick is here as well as the door county medical team to explain um, but just in general essence, this is a medical clinic facility, two-story building. Um, it is a larger building there, um, and they're going to be doing rehabilitation on the second floor with a clinic and a pharmacy on the first floor. Um, Brian or Patrick, if anyone else wants to jump in and, and give some more details, now would be the time. Thanks. I mean, Thanks. Do, uh, they, do they want to take us through uh, the plan um, that they have submitted, or how would they like to address this. Uh, Denise, if I can start, this is Brian Stevens. I'm the CEO at Door County Medical Center. Thank you so much for allowing us to be on the agenda tonight and taking up this uh, matter of business. 
Uh, if, if you don't mind, I, I'll just start with a brief overview of the clinic, kind of the background on why we feel it's necessary. And, and then we have all sorts of people on the line from uh, architects to, to the folks at Gray, uh, to the folks at Bolt who we're gonna be working with in terms of construction to help answer your questions. Um, so the, the situation, the Northern Door market is our fastest growing market for clinic and rehab services. And not only is that proven uh, incredibly true this summer, uh, with all of our projections coming in higher than target uh, for this summer for both Fish Creek clinic visits and Sister Bay rehab visits. But we did uh, do an advisory board study and projected that clinic demand will grow 40% over the next 10 years and rehab demand will grow 60% over that same time period in our Northern Door uh, zip codes. So we have the opportunity to construct a combined clinic and rehab location in Sister Bay that will replace our uh, Fish Creek Clinic uh, that will serve the needs of our Northern Door residents for years to come. Uh, the timeline, we actually started looking at this back in the fall of 2020, uh, engaged Caldwell Associates, and we have folks from Caldwell on the, on the line with us today to help us envision and design a new building. Uh, in the winter of 2021, we met with our clinical teams and designed a space that would meet their needs now and in the future. And in addition, we conducted a focus group meeting with selected Fish Creek Clinic patients to run the plans by them and get their feedback as well. The design includes space for five full-time clinicians compared to the three that practice in Fish Creek today. We have also space for rotating clinicians to bring more specialists up to Northern Door. Our clinic spaces will be designed with behavioral health and telehealth needs in mind as well. In fact, one of the five clinicians that are one of the, the two additional clinicians that we hope to hire is a full-time uh, behavioral health clinician to provide those services uh, in that market, which we don't have today. Uh, in terms of the rehab space on the second floor, uh, we'll be looking at an enlarged gym compared to what we have uh, in the Scandia Village site today. In addition to additional therapy rooms to allow for flexible programming, uh, we also plan to bring in a retail pharmacy into the space on the first floor uh, for the convenience of, of our patients and, and the community. And we have been talking with a uh, local pharmacy uh, in terms of that. So not talking about uh, us running the pharmacy, but actually leasing space out to an existing retail pharmacy uh, to run their operation out of that building. Uh, on the second floor, we're also designing additional community space for en enhanced health and wellness programming. Uh, we've heard of needs like the need for uh, Alcoholic Anonymous group uh, to meet and uh, other community groups like that. And so we'll be designing some space where that might be possible in the building as well. We felt like a two-story design um, had, you know, the architectural look and feel uh, that would fit in uh, with all the other wonderful buildings in Sister Bay. Uh, and we can tell you more about the design as we go. Uh, but the design also includes functional and natural elements that meet the needs of older adults and bring the beauty of Door County into the building. Uh, then in the spring of this year, uh, after the design work was mostly done, uh, we brought Bolt on board uh, as our, as our uh, general contractor. And uh, they have really helped us narrow in on an appropriate budget and uh, what we feel like is, is going to be a great opportunity uh, to build this clinic up in, in Sister Bay. So that's just a little bit of background and I will turn it over uh, to our, our architects and our, our construction team uh, for more details, but would be happy to answer any questions as well. I think we're all just very excited um, that you're coming to Sister Bay. Um, I, I, we're just really pleased. Um, Rob? I just wanted to get a clarifier. The clinic, will that offer urgent care services or will it be strict business hour appointments? Uh, what we've talked about is uh, somewhere in between. Um, when you talk about urgent care, there's a requirement to have a certain amount of, of lab and radiology services on site, which we don't believe we'll be able to do in that building. Uh, but we do have plans to accept walk-ins and same day appointments. So from that standpoint, somebody will be able to walk in and get services that day. Uh, but it won't be a, a true urgent care, so to speak. Thank you. And who from your team would like to speak next? I think we would turn it over to uh, our lead, uh, Grace, please. Okay. 
Um, well, I, I guess we can handle it in a couple of different ways. We can walk through the drawings if you would like, or we can, uh, I can give an overview of what the site entails um, on a larger scale or an, a, a more broad overview. And you can ask questions from that. I think if we get into architectural elements, um, whether it be renderings or elevations, colors, materials, things like that, then Jim Caperton who's on the line as well can join in. Um, so if you want, I can start with just kind of giving an overview of what the site entails um, how we're dealing with utilities, stormwater parking, uh, landscape requirements, uh, green space covered, those kind of things. Um, uh, I can just... As you do that, Patrick, excuse me, um, yep. should we be sharing the screen of what you're discussing? Okay, Bo started yep. that now. Yep, that would be that would be probably the best path forward, I think, for everybody. Patrick, you, Patrick, you just tell me when to move on or what page to go to, and I can do that. Okay, um, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I, I can just direct you I'm, I'm mainly gonna talk through um the next two pages because this is really just demolition this is kind of a combination of demolition as you know there's an existing building um an old uh shop not anymore it's gone <laughs> uh, okay there was an existing building at the time of the survey um along with some other vegetation but basically um it was partially developed on the north half of the combined four parcels roughly um, with the southerly portion of the combined parcels being effectively open space. Um, so you're seeing here kind of an overlay of what was removed and demoed in areas that haven't been touched yet when it comes to vegetation removal um, for the development, kind of the hatched in area, the building, obviously that L-shaped kind of feature that's gone and then the rest of it being um, primarily uh, removal of trees and brush and other things with the X's and the other shaded areas. Uh, what you're seeing overlaid on top of that is the proposed development kind of features, parking, building, stormwater, um, just kind of helping to understand um, why we're removing what we are um, because of it, where it located within the site and the proposed uh, improvements. So if you wanna to go to the next page, Bo. So what this, with this drawing is really where I wanna spend the most time, um, this one on the next one, but, but really what you're seeing here is the building in the lower left, uh, rectangular, uh, generally, generally a rectangular looking um, feature. Um, that is the building outline uh, with the main entry uh, uh, to the northwest or upper left of the building. Um, obviously, the, the balance of the site is combined between parking and uh, entry drop-off loop, as you can see immediately north of the entry point um, with a covered um, drop-off area, uh, two-lane available for traffic. Uh, the rest of the site uh, north of the building and east of the building is for uh, both employee, um, physician, and visitor parking. Um, there are landscape islands, as you see, um, those are the oval-shaped end cap islands, um, uh, landscaped, as you'll see in a later drawing um, that we'll talk through briefly, um, but really uh, end capping the parking areas, providing that green space coverage, um, or adding to that green space coverage and the landscaping for the interior island per your code. Uh, parking stalls adjacent to uh, the front entry at the closest point and direct travel accessible path to the main entry. Um, concrete sidewalk and concrete pavement in that area off the main entry. Um, the rest of it will be asphalt um, and curb and gutter for the islands alone. The perimeter of the parking lot will, will be uh, uh, just edge uh, aggregate, two foot shoulder in effect off the edge of the asphalt path or asphalt uh, uh, pavement. Um, southeast of the building, you're seeing the service area off of Applewood Road. Um, there is a ambulance uh, um, parking area or, or drop-off area, which is off the corner of the building. Um, that other rectangle that's more concrete is a, a service yard uh, for our transformer, CT electrical, and chiller. And then the other angled uh, concrete pavement area off of that main asphalt drive by the ambulance is the dumpster enclosure area, uh, that kind of little offshoot piece on the southeast corner. And then um, regarding utilities and drainage, you can see our um, detention pond, and this is a wet detention pond in the southwest corner of the site. Um, generally speaking, drainage will be overland flow from the parking lot to the north along to a swale drainage area along the west side of the site. You can see the arrowheads pointing the swale direction and flow direction. Um, the parking area immediately east of the building will flow overland to the south where there is also a drainage swale, uh, not as pronounced, but you'll see it on the grading plan. I can show you that in a minute, uh, but also draining overland to the pond. 
Uh, the pond is sized per both sister bay and DNR code requirements for 210 and 100, meeting both quantity and quality control requirements. Uh, and then there is an outlet structure that's taking that, that's the storm, that STM line on the south side of the site that takes the discharge from the pond to the storm sewer and Appleton, Applewood Road uh, to the southeast. Um, so that's general overview of the site uh, regarding paving. Um, if you wanna go to the next sheet, go. Oh. Um, this one, again, this is obviously the same features, but this is our grading plan. Um, I won't get into the details, but generally speaking, um, from that northeast corner of the building is kind of our break line, that, that landscape island, everything south of that is going overland to the south. Um, the, the bulk of the uh, parking lot on the north is going to the west and both coming around to the pond um, in the southwest corner. Um, so again, the perimeter of the parking and the drive lane is not going to be curbed. We're only having curb on the interior island. So the rest is overland sheet flow, which is obviously better. We don't want to put in pipe that gets there faster. It doesn't clean it. We want to get it over grass and turf as much as possible to take out some of the sediment. And then the wet pond um, is the most effective uh, sediment reduction BMP out there, short of a filter, um, and really is going to get us to that 80% TSS requirement that we have or just under that. Uh, because this is a combined redevelopment site with the existing building portion and the new development under the, of the south half of the, so, of the site where I talked about earlier wasn't, no buildings were contained on that portion. So we looked at that as a new development uh, condition. You can go to the next, oh, let me just, uh, yeah, uh, the utilities, um, if you want to go to the next sheet, I think the utilities are on that one. Yep. So this uh, effectively, like I said, this is all drainage overland flow. Uh, to grass swales and a wet detention pond. So you're not going to see stormwater other than that discharge pipe along the south property line. Um, the utilities will be coming off of Apple to Applewood Road, um, sanitary sewer and water main in the southeast corner of the building. Um, it is a six inch sanitary service based on our DFU requirements and a four inch water uh, service based on our water service fixture unit demand requirements. So those are our locations for both sanitary and water utility connections. Uh, electrical, telephone, data, all that is located in Applewood Road, um, and that will be coming off that location as well. Next sheet. Uh, really nothing here. This is just general notes. Um, if you want to go into the details, you're going to see information on C501 pertaining to drainage and erosion control, um, mainly during construction, silt fence, construction entrance, riprap, erosion matting, things like that. We get to the next pages, you're gonna see details for pavement and curb and ADA required uh, domes <clears throat> and painting. And then as Bo has up now, the landscape plan. So I'll touch on this really quick. Again, um, you know, we want this site to look um, natural. Um, we want it to look as natural as possible. We want to soften the edges. We wanna make sure that, you know, we have vegetation in here that is going to enhance not only the building, but also your community. Um, this is gonna be a combination of uh, ornamental and shade trees uh, with select ground cover and perennial areas um, um, in certain corners and areas that uh, we want to edge, uh, edge treatments primarily. Um, you'll see that mostly along the building corners, um, all around the building and a little bit around the dumpster enclosure where we're utilizing a lot of the landscaping for screening of both the chiller yard and the dumpster enclosure and that service area on the south side of the building. Um, as I said, this is a wet pond, so um, there isn't going to be um, vegetation within that wet area, but we will have um, obviously plantings that are native. Um, we want to do something that is a, a low irrigation requirement, so we're not having an irrigation system out here, so it's drought tolerant and it's conducive and susceptible for this area, um, given the bedrock conditions and the soil types. So um, plant schedule is on the left side. You can see both the technical, but uh, botanical name as well as the common name and the sizes are on the right column of that table indicating the installed site or size generally but also indicating um, max height for a lot of the shrubs um, and trees. So that's the landscape plan um, and we get into some other generalities. I guess we're into the structural information. I don't know Bo, if you want to skip to architectural do you want to go into the structural or any other? Um, I think, we, I think we go to architectural. If anyone has any structural questions, they can ask. I am not smart enough, nor do I get paid enough to <laughs> understand that. 
All right. Um, Jim, I'm going to kind of turn this over to you um, a little bit to talk about the architectural. Just one point of note. Yeah, the parking calculations, um, if you want to touch on that briefly, you can see um, the calculations and how those were determined in the uh, lower right corner. Um, so that's for information. And I know there were some questions that we can talk about when we get to that point, but that's parking. Um, and then I think if we get into, I think the next few sheets, we start getting into floor plans and elevations. So Jim, do you wanna take over from here and talk architecturally about the building itself? Sure, but actually I was gonna let Michael Crawford, our lead designer. That's fine with me. The, good the initial presentation here. Good, ever, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, hi, Bo. How are you? It's good to good to see you again. Um, could you advance to the render uh, renderings, or do you have renderings in there, or just the elevations? I can put the renderings up. We have okay. the elevations. Do we have the perspectives in there, or just the straight on elevations? I can't recall. Just the straight on elevations. Okay. Um, the perspectives should be followed behind that. Oh, I think the renderings are in there. Go through it on a couple sheets. Yeah. I think yep, there, there we go. go. Yep. I think just as an opening statement. Um, from an architectural standpoint, we, you, you all live in an extraordinary place. And we were inspired by the sense of place, the community, the people and the architecture. And our design is meant to reflect that in, in every way. We were inspired by the um, nature of Scandinavian uh, and modern architecture in the community, the incredible sense of artistic um, um, impulse in that community, and the uh, you know, incredible warmth that we were received with when visiting um, uh, uh, community members, patients, physicians, um, clients, um, uh, and, and other uh, folks that we uh, came across in the development of this design. So I think it's actually you know, appropriate to start from the outside uh, before we look into the mechanics of it. And I think one thing that Brian, I, I would say that um, would add to what Brian made as a statement, giving you a lot of the details of the what we were doing he, he and his uh, staff really directed us to, to design something that didn't look like a typical health clinic. They didn't want it to look like a medical institutional facility. They wanted this to look like a library or a community center or even a museum of some kind so that it really was a community, uh, a community building and not just a place where you, you know, checked in and got your medication and, and did rehab. So that was really the driving force behind everything that we um uh, developed here and if you this is a view from the northeast as you see across the the parking lot i think if you advance to the next um the next rendering you can see what is effectively the front elevation um where we've got the covered entrance that you can see here the the um, um heavily developed folded plane for the for the roof that we can channel uh water and snow off of and control um public uh semi-public areas on the second floor that you can see there will be used for classrooms for Alcoholics Anonymous and many other community groups, and even an outdoor area on the front of the building that faces the highway that can be used for events. So everything that we, everything that we de developed in this um, was developed with a sense of community, with the, the sense of craft from the shipbuilding and other uh, uh, heavy timber um, history that the community has. And that's what drove many of the decisions in terms of both the materials, the forms, and just the way that the design um, reflected what we hope the community would be proud of in a facility of this type. So I can't tell you how um, excited we are to be working on this project with everyone involved from the client, the engineers, um, uh, to the community members itself. So you can see the development of the, ex the exterior here. And then if we maybe then go back into the um, interior of the facility of how it sort of functions, Jim, if you want to well, let's 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 stay on those elevations just a second. I can just talk about the materials quickly, and then we'll go into the um, uh, on the interior, the floor plan layout. Go one more to the side elevations. We have a, a combination of um, fiber cement siding, with, uh, which will be painted in earth tones, um, a heavy timber, a simulated heavy timber uh, out, uh, exterior frame on the outside of the facility that braces the structure an extensive use of glass to bring light into the structure. Um, this has uh, benefits not just for its employees, but for patients as well and well-being and promotion of well-being within the facility. Um, the uh, 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 roof is going to be um, uh, asphalt shingles that can channel the, uh, the water to these collection points and be handled through the stormwater system. 
Um, and we played with a um, sort of a balance of natural materials and some more modern materials, like you see the steel bracing. And if you zoomed in farther, you could see some of the steel <laughs> detailing we did with the heavy timber where it meets the ground so that it's lifted up off um, to protect the protect the wood from snow and, and moisture and other components. Um, other weather items there, yes. Um, so you can see the, 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 and if you scoot over to the right, you can see sort of the palette that we're dealing with. I think it's on the, the above page where we have the actual material samples in. Thanks, Bo. Um, yes, there are sm a small portion of the materials are stone, stacked stone. Um, there you go, perfect. Um, the fiber cement is a combination of, the, of a muted gray and then the dark colored iron, iron ore is used for the accents. That's the, the door and window frames, um, the, any of the metal pieces themselves. Um, uh, we we're hoping to create a nice contemporary and modern uh, facility that also was very friendly and non-institutional, not cold, something that was warm and inviting. Um, and we can go into, Jim, if you want to um, walk through the floor plan of how that was laid out to the degree that... Um, that folks want to listen to that, but in general, it's it's going to be the uh, clinic and pharmacy on the first floor, with the rehab on the second floor, and with additional public spaces as well, classroom spaces in the outdoor area we described. Mr. Miller, I'm sorry, could I have your first name, please? Uh, my name is Michael Crawford, and I'm with oh, my, my business partner. My business partner is Miller Caldwell. Caldwell. And yes, and I'm here as well. Okay. Michael Crawford from Miller Caldwell, is it? That's correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And if you want to go up, Jim, do you want to look at the, uh, should we cover uh, the basics of how the floor plan was laid out or is the interior, um, we, we can, we can um, go with the discussion how um, uh, the board is curious to, to see how that, that's developed. Sure, however, however they'd like to proceed. If, if they'd like to walk through it, we can, we can certainly do that. Or we can start talking. We can kind of talk about the exterior as, as you've described it. Does the plan commission want to go through the actual layout of the rooms, or should we just move forward? Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Then do you want to hear our questions or comments? Uh, I think that'd be great uh, if Grafe uh, or anyone else on the team, Miller, Jim included, of course, um, wanted to add anything to what I described was the design intent or the site layout. I think uh, Patrick did a great job describing the, me the mechanics of how we were developing the site. And then also um, as, a, as a designer, how important the landscape plan and the development of how this building will sit in the site and become a part of the community is really critical to us too, using um, natural and native materials to, the, to Door County and developing a, a natural palette of materials that uh, uh, is inviting and, and, and becomes a, a, an addition to the community that they can be proud of. Okay, does anybody else from your team wanna say anything else before we get to questions? Oh man, unless you have some questions for us. Okay, Rob. Yeah, we accept questions, yeah. Rob, did you start to say something? Uh, I was waiting to see if somebody else had questions they wanted to ask. You may start. Okay, um, I've got a question. Uh, it's page 58 in our packet. Um, it's the exterior, north exterior elevation, south exterior elevation. Uh, that's 57 down there at the bottom would be the next page after that. Yeah. Okay. So right there. That's great, Bo. Um, it says metal collector head and downspout. I'm a, uh, so my question is, okay, we've got a gutterless building. I'm not familiar with the term or that I'm aware of a building that uses a metal collector head instead of a gutter uh, that leads to the downspout. I did hear in, in, in the last summary 
the statement that their design of the roof included uh, being able to control water and snow. So my, my question is, when I, when I look at this and I see a metal collector had signified, but I don't see it. <clears throat> and when we had the, the other illustration that showed the parking lot and, and what it would, um, a, a, ren a rendering of what it would look like finished in the same manner. And so my question is, looking at those, the way the roof moves, how do you control water coming off the roof? Because that was the word you used and I'm interested in that. But it seems to me that as a lay person looking at this, if there's a metal collector head that I can't see, that is small enough that I can't see it and it replaces a gutter, how does all that rainwater or melting snow water rush off those sections of V sections of roof and not overrun the metal collector head. And the reason for my concern on that is when I look at the other rendering that shows the parking lot and the sidewalk, there, there's not a lot of space between the side of that building and, and where the sidewalk starts and where the entrance is. Yes, and that's, that's a great question. And, and to, be, to be quite honest with you, the collector head is basically a small gutter. Uh, what we did is we sectioned this roof off into eight quadrants to minimize the amount of water and snow that would go to each of them. And we are sizing the, the collector head, which is basically um, envisioned, if you will, a big floor sink that collects all of that water that runs in there because our slopes are three and a half and 12. So we're not gonna have a lot of velocity with the, with the water coming off. And the way we're controlling it is, is we're basically funneling it directly to that collector head. It will have a, a little backstop to it to stop it from shooting over the edge. And then it will collect it and, and divert it down into the gutter and the downspout. Well, the gutter is the collector head down into the downspout to a splash block. And Thank from you. there, we'll, we'll sheet flow around the building as, as Patrick had described. So, so if you look at it that way, we have eight little gutters. <laughs> and now is that, is that system something that your design team has implemented on other buildings or is it something new that we're the first run on for your team? Well, this, this is a unique instance, but we do it. it this is a basically on, on a flat roof building. If we don't have internal roof drains, this is exactly how it works when it flows to the, it's like a single slope to the back of the building. And then we use what's called a cricket to divert the water directly, directing it to a, a scupper, which is basically a hole in the parapet. And on the outside of that scupper is a collector head that goes right into a downspout. So it, it happens. This is this is a widely used concept. We're just using it as more of an open system. Okay. Thank you, sir. My, my only other question would be, um, when I look at the uh, information in our packet on parking, I see a total spaces of 167, and I see a notation of six handicap spaces. And my question would be, do you envision six handicap spaces being enough? Um, mm -hmm. I, th I, I think it's, I think, the fact that you're highlighting you're going to need 167 spaces for the scope of what you're thankfully and most graciously offering us that we're very glad to have is excellent. But but it seems like, especially if you have a clinic that's taking appointments throughout the day, and then you're also going to have people coming in who are hoping to walk in or might be, you know, you have to call an ambulance because of, uh, you know, you don't have a full urgent care. It just seems like with that number of spaces, there might be a need for more than just six handicapped spaces. If I could jump in quick, um, just to clarify, and, and this was obviously, this is a fluid design and we're not quite done yet, but we're pretty darn close, but uh, the parking count is 140. I think when we had, we had um, uh, kind of explored another parking area to the south along that dumpster, which has since been eliminated um, so the true count per the civil drawings is 140 stalls. Um, the configuration on SP100 is generally the same as the civil. There's a couple little tweaks with the islands, but, um, but 140 is the true count of parking. But we still do have the six ADA 
accessible spaces of which uh, we do have two van accessible and four vehicle car passenger accessible ones. But well, there are six. There were six handicapped spaces on some pages, on some plans, and then there were nine on others, depending upon what, uh, what sheet you were looking at. Um, the civil drawings, or are you talking about the architectural? Uh, in, in the packet. Okay. Because I am looking at the civil drawings and there is six that we're showing. I can try to find it in where I notated it. In uh, it's on it. earlier in the landscaping plan. There is quite a few more there. You go up to, I don't know what page yep. that is. Yeah, that, that appears like there's an overlay issue with that. I'm looking at that, but the, the landscape plan is an intended and nor is it showed, you know, design features of the build, you know, for contractors to build this, the site plan is the civil drawings, which is pavement parking. That's purely landscape. There, it looks like there is some background overlay issues in that area, but the civil drawings are what govern. Um, those are what's built to, and that is corresponding with the parking count on SP100 as well, which shows the detailed parking calculation. So all the parking specific drawings um, are coordinated. The civil or the landscape one, you're correct. There is an overlay issue on the on the graphic, but six is the count uh, per the civil and SP100 drawing. Okay, so six it is. Correct. Okay. And I'm assuming that's the ADA compliance. Yes, um, the SP100 table outlines the requirements for okay. um, the parcel. According to Wisconsin statutes, um, <clears throat> if the, the facility offers 50 to 1,000 spaces, 2% uh, of their spaces need to be um, for handicap accessibility, okay. which they meet. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a three. Yep. So do you anticipate, so did, have I heard correctly in the uh, overview at the beginning, this pharmacy is not just for DCMC people. This would be for anybody in the community? Yes, sir, that's correct. It would be a public retail pharmacy uh, that would be obviously convenient for DCMC patients to come for, directly from a clinic appointment to be able to have a prescription filled, but anybody could park and walk in and use the pharmacy regardless. With that in mind and with some of the other parking traffic issues when I talk about, is there a thought that part of your parking should be for the quote retail Pressing. customers only? Yeah. Good point. Yeah, we, I don't guess we've considered that. We could, we could certainly consider it. Um, just out of my curiosity, I know the current retail pharmacy in Sister Bay is at Country Walk Shops. Do, do they have that kind of scenario where they have parking spots designated for that pharmacy? They have parking designated for all of the country walk shops. Sure. So on page 30 of our packet, it says one space per 250 square feet for pharmacy equivalent to seven spaces. So that's, 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 that's an incorrect. Yeah, um, that's, go ahead, Denise. Um, there in the, the parking code, there is no uh, specific um, requirement for a pharmacy. So I would believe that it would fall under retail sales. Yep. And that criteria is one space for every 150 square feet. So we, and it, somebody we, could tell me. Um, I have a calculation, Denise, already. Okay, I would like somebody from their team to tell me the size, the square footage of the pharmacy. If you stand by just a minute, I can do that for you. Uh, bear with me just a moment. Um, <clears throat> oh. Where is that? <coughs> It is, oh, come on. Oh, 
is wonderful when you're waiting on it. The pharmacy is approximately is 1,385 square feet. Thank you. Um, one of the, the parking, um, <coughs> for us to determine how much parking is needed um, for this development, um, we need to know how many employees will be there on the largest work shift. And that was not included in your parking calculations. And I was wondering, does uh, Brian Stevens know roughly what that might be at this point in time? <coughs> Jim, do you know, have we, have we given you that number and or Miller in terms of any of our plans? Um, I don't this, know. It, yeah, this is Miller. Um, uh, we have, when we ran models, we've had uh, people working at the facility ranging from uh, 35 to 45. Right. That, yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, I, I would guess today we probably have around 20, 25 to 30 working in both of those spaces. But of course, we're planning for growth. So I, yeah, I would say, you know, maybe up to 40, 45 if we get up to full capacity. And, and does that include the 15 doctors or not? That would include the position, yes. So if you have 15 doctors, okay, so then that means that you are only going to have an additional 30 employees. That seems rather low. Would, would there be We don't have employees? 15 doctors. We, yeah, it was five we doctors. We would have a potential of seven uh, providers there, uh, but three of those would be traveling, which would mean that they would be coming up from Sturgeon Bay, so they would not be there on a permanent basis. Right now, we have three. Three doctors. Correct. Okay, where did I get the traveling from? physicians would still have to park there unless they're taking a trolley? Uh, we understand that, yep. Yeah. I think he said five doctors, um, Denise. Yeah, see on the design. Right on their sheet, it says 15. Yeah, I don't know if that's um, somehow incorporating the uh, physical therapists and occupational yes. therapists who would work in our yes. rehab space. If you, if you added up the physicians and the occupational therapists and and physical therapist, that probably would come out to 15. Yep. Okay, then we will leave They're it at 15. actual doctors, sorry. Yep. Okay. But with nurses, the physicians, and uh, the actual doctors, right now, you, we would probably cap out on the busiest day at about 30 people right now. Okay. But we're planning for growth, what you would see uh, in these parking calculations. Okay. Bo, what's 1,400 divided, divided by 150? I don't have a calculator. It, it's right, right below 10 spaces. So if you round up, it'll be yeah. 10. It's 9.3. All right. So 10. Okay. All right. So we're looking at 10 spaces for the pharmacy, 75 spaces for the doctors and others, and then 30 spaces for the employees. So that 115. Looking at 115, and you have proposed 140. Okay, so that gives you opportunity for growth. Okay. All right. Somebody else from the plan commission have questions? I have one question about the meeting space. Um, and Brian, you mentioned a couple uh, types of uh, groups that could meet up there. Is that a type of space that would be accommodating to um, a small group of 
uh, residents or in particular uh, senior citizen residents looking to do winter um, activity, yoga type activity <laughs> or walk around type activity that they would normally drive to the YMCA and Fish Creek for, or is it not that large? It, it, yeah, it is. It would accommodate that sort of thing. And in fact, I, I have it in mind to talk with Heidi Erickson next week about, I know that they the YMCA has done some programming outdoors in Sister Bay in the past. And I wondered if they would be interested or willing to do that same sort of programming indoors in, in this space. So yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be talking with them about that. Okay. Well, we also need to calculate parking for that. Well, that Primarily, I think, would be outside of the regular hours of um, those yeah. would not be allowed to happen during business hours. Right. OK. The other question I had for you, Brian, is that you had mentioned the, uh, what will be new to the community, the behavioral health presence. Would that include something, for instance, like um, good eating habits for uh, a field trip from the daycare center to bring the children and, and young people over to hear uh, the behaviors of good eating habits, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, when I was speaking of behavioral health, I was really talking about uh, mental health, like uh, counseling. Uh, okay. but, but yeah, I mean, the classroom space will certainly be able to accommodate community groups, including children for those types of events, for sure. Thank you. Sure. Brian, congratulations. Um, this is quite a step forward for Sister Bay and Northern Door. I just had some question on if traffic counts were taken. Um, that specific area is already home to several condominium developments, um, many of which have been scrutinized more about ingress, egress in that area than I've heard tonight. So, um, have traffic counts been done for ingress, egress onto Highway 57, considering um, you're talking, you know, 167 parking spaces. Um, additionally, ingress, egress for Good Samaritan, um, Hidden Maples, the villas. And on Friday afternoon, you already can't make a left-hand turn as traffic is starting to come into downtown Sister Bay. Now, it sounds like you will not be having specific weekend office hours, which is obviously the peak time for that. But late June through August, all day, the, the traffic is, is backed up at some points past the Scandinavian Lodge. So I'm just wondering, has a traffic count been done to, to determine the effects of the ingress, egress, especially as this came in at approximately the same time last fall that we were approving um, the, the new housing development across the road. And yes, that will have ingress, egress in different directions also. But um, I, I am just wondering because that is one of the routes that ambulance takes. And, um, it, you know, anybody who's driven there on a Friday afternoon or Saturday morning to, tr to try to get out of that area is very difficult. But I'm picturing trying to even get in at this point in time. So um, considering the fact that we do give ingress, egress a great deal of attention, even on our smaller condominium developments, I am wondering what has been done to address um, that. Well, the, the folks from Grape may be able to provide some, some details in terms of the studies that have been done and, and that sort of thing. I, I will mention a couple of things. One, you know, our current rehab location uh, is, in the Scandia Village building. And so currently all of the rehab traffic already comes through that, that corridor, Canterbury Lane and to Applewood and, and that sort of thing. So really the additional traffic that we're talking about are the, the clinic visits, which is significant. I'm not saying it, it's not, um, you know, those are scheduled out. Uh, so if we have, you know, three physicians, uh, which is what we'll start with and even going up to five, you know, you're probably talking about uh, 15 clinic visits an hour at the most. 
Um, so uh, I think it'll be, you know, fairly scheduled out th throughout the day um, in, in, in terms of traffic. And of course, our Fish Creek Clinic that exists today, you know, we deal with those same sorts of issues, particularly late on a Friday, as you said, of, of people having to turn out of that clinic directly onto the highway. Whereas in this one, it <coughs> got a little bit of buffer by turning onto to Canterbury Lane before they have to, to turn onto the highway nice. that allows for a little queuing. But um, Jim or, or folks from Grafe, any, any additional things to add in terms of studies there? I yeah. would wonder more so about not necessarily your your access to the property, but the intersection itself from Canterbury to the highway. And is, is that suitable? Is there something that could possibly be done to uh, possibly have a right turn only lane? Um, so then people turning left, you don't have traffic backing up. As we all know, it's difficult to take a left-hand turn anywhere in Sister Bay. Um, did anybody look at the actual intersection? Um, well, the, the current intersection configuration, as I'm sure you all know, has if you're going westbound on 57 or northbound, um, it's got a significantly long a deceleration right turn lane it's about 250 feet literally runs the length of the parcel so if you're going um, that direction you have a right turn lane so entering into it from 57 um, from the east southeast is is not going to be an issue based on that um, i think as you know looking at um we did you know look briefly at it and, and granted you know the pavement out there is is fairly new um that they've done some widening on 57 um, it's not a bypass lane per se, um, but it has been widened to about a four foot shoulder with a three foot gravel shoulder on the one side uh, as you're heading out of town. Um, it is not a bypass lane, of course, um, but there is additional shy distance for vehicles if needed. Um, you know, when it comes to property and widening and, you know, obviously we need to be sensitive to those adjacent properties as well. Um, widening for turn lanes and adding additional lanes is gonna require property acquisition. Um, to provide two lanes of traffic in addition to one entry lane, you'd need 36 feet. Uh, you could get down to 33, uh, which would push us into and towards, um, uh, I guess, the Northeast um, to that living community, the Good Samaritan, and, and towards the church side of Canterbury Lane. So, um, and I think the other point is, um, you know, this isn't a shift change type of operation where you're going to get a, a major influx of vehicles at one given time. Um, so the spacing of those counts um, are going to be you know, wide enough where the queue distance and queue length um, should be adequate. Now, has a traffic study been done to um, you know, look at that from a uh, uh, metric standpoint? No, um, it hasn't been required. Um, and typically on a, on a development of this where it's zoned for this use as well as other properties around it, um, you know, the traffic intersection with the turn lane coming into town um, and the DOT really having control over that, those would be the ones driving that requirement. Um, but we have not been asked to, nor um, at least our interpretation, um, not part of the requirement, but we do know that there are provisions and widening that has been done in the turn lane going westbound. It's gonna provide that access, at least from that direction. Um, so um, a study, not yet, and hasn't been done, And uh, but there are turning provisions in, in a lot of these areas right now. That sidewalk's brand new. Um, the curb on that one, uh, I guess, westbound side on the north side of the road is brand new or fairly new. Um, so there has been some evaluation of it by WSDOT, um, and if they would have seen that, I guess they would have looked at zoning um, of that parcel that we're on under full development to determine whether that intersection needed an upgrade. Um, when you do these traffic studies, it doesn't have to be there. It just has to be zoned for a specific use. And then that use is calculated in the future uh, intersection calculations or evaluations of the traffic flow. Um, so whether we were there or not, it would have been zoned commercial and looked at that way by the DOT. Right, but the village has more of the onerousness on the village. Is there any chance that during the next, um, is there any chance that a camera or something could be set up over the next two Fridays, not this coming Friday, but the following Friday, and then 
the week after that, possibly fr Monday, I'm talking Columbus Day weekend during the week. I'm assuming that the clinic does operate during holidays like Columbus Day and then um, possibly Friday during Fall Festival just to see what kind of ingress and egress problems already exist. Um, we don't have a camera to do that. Um, and I don't know how we would generate that study in that time. I'm not asking for a study right now, Bo. I'm just asking for an observation. I mean, we put a lot more thought into the ingress and egress of the Solinsky property across the street than the discussion I've heard on this. So Mary Kay, for the, <clears throat> to have a meaningful video out there, I mean, this is something that they have dedicated video systems for, for monitoring traffic and parking and all that. It's something I've dug into. I don't think it's something that we could effectively mobilize in two weeks. I do think it's something that we should look into so we have it in our toolkit moving forward because I do think it's a good idea, but I think to try and do it by Columbus Day, would, we, could, we could certainly get a camera up there, but I don't think we would get any, any meaningful data because it's not just a matter of looking at the cars, it's a matter of taking that and making it meaningful data. They're staying with this. Denise, you, were, you came up to 115 spots, correct? Correct. How many of those were visitors or patients? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we didn't. Um, it was only employees, doctors, 10 people um, for the pharmacy. That was it. We didn't have we didn't have the customers. No, if I'm correct, you're calculating how many spaces per doctor. So Correct. you're considering that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Correct. I'm sorry, so, David. So what I was trying to break out was to the to the shift change uh, comment. I mean, 60 people show up at eight o'clock and then five people an hour or something like that is I'm just trying to get a handle. The, the 140 number sounds onerous. Um, that's a lot of people, but if they're if only some of them are are quote customers, um, maybe it's a little bit less. And then secondly, and maybe we could just take a look at that. Secondly, I noticed in Bo's introduction that Chief Heck is not real. He would prefer that we have another access anyways. I'm not sure this is a burden we can put on them, but uh, he he does have an issue with the access to this whole area, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure is Chief Hecht on this call. Yeah, I'm here, Bo. Uh, Chief, I know we've talked about this before, and not specifically related to this de development, but this area in general. Can you give a, a brief overview of what your thoughts are in this area. Yeah, so this has been a sticky point for us for a number of years, and we've discussed it at the village level multiple times. You know, the the if you look at the percentage of the population of the village that lives on that dead end section of road and that's what that all is is a dead end section it's a very high percentage granted a lot of it is in scan but we have one way in and one way out um and again that this this development doesn't change that really but um all it takes is something to happen at that intersection and we have no way to access scan hidden maples or anything else that's down there um you know would this fractionally raise the the chances of something happening at that corner sure but this, this project, in my opinion, shouldn't go forward or be stopped based on our lack of a second way in and out of that area. We've known that's a problem. You know, if you go back to 30, 40 years ago, Dick Burris will tell you that this has been a problem. It has been talked about at the village and nobody has done anything about it. And it, it needs to be addressed. And if this is what it takes to get it addressed, then we need to do it. That becomes more of a village planning Absolutely. issue. Absolutely, it does become a development growth. Um, this is not a single individual's problem. This is the village's problem. Correct. Right. right. Isn't this why we had uh, Canterbury Lane extended out so many years ago? I mean, it's it's getting right. relatively close to a connection there, but I, I believe that was only done what in the last five or seven years. The the current owner of the connecting property will not part with it and sell it. Uh, for the connection is they believe that that is a undue safety hazard for people entering onto Maple Drive. Yes. <clears throat> so 
if I recall, that was that was one of the options. The other option was to have something further down, but there were some challenges with the DOT. Is that what I recall? Correct. So I, I guess at some point we do hit the tipping point where we need to deal with this. I, I hear what uh, Chief Heck is saying, and I agree that that's not this development's burden, but I think it might be a little bit more than an incremental increase in the chance that it happens because it makes that intersection that much more likely where an accident's going to happen. Um, so, gosh, we really need to do something about this. We've said that for years. Right, but the, the accident is most more likely to happen somebody rear-ending somebody else out on the highway, not in that, you know what I mean? It, I think there's a much higher probability that the accident happens on the highway than in the intersection. The point being that we have now blocked that intersection and access to everything beyond it. I do think, just for a little bit of clarification, we do keep talking about it. We do we are trying different avenues. We keep running into roadblocks. I think it's also um, a timing issue and what other people want to do or don't want to do with their property, what we can acquire, what we can't acquire. So I do believe in everything that the, the village is aware of, of development, this is always simmering um, in our minds on how can we address this and how are we going to get it done? I believe we will get it done at some point in time. Um, it's just not right now. I think I that we need asked if a traffic count had been done, if, if this had been studied. It sounds as though it has not actually been studied. Well, we've been talking about this for 20 some years on this committee. Right, Marge, but it's... But I don't know that a traffic study would necessarily change my mind. It is zoned commercial, and commercial usually can is a heavy use. It is on the highway. Um, I, I don't think whatever the traffic study would have come up, what their conclusions were, would have made me you know, one way or another deny or appro approve it because it is, as they said earlier, zoned, zoned commercial. Then you have to apply that to everything that is zoned commercial, including areas that are just as, as dense as this. I mean, I'm all in favor of this moving forward, but I think you have to take the appropriate steps and what are you saying those steps would be? I, I don't think they've been taken. I don't know what they are. I would have thought that this would have been a part of our packet. And I went through it four times just to say, we have studied the ingress and egress of this area. We realized that this is a huge multi-use area. And I guess I didn't put it as much thought into the actual pharmacy being available to the general public besides. And I didn't even mention the church, you know? I mean, obviously that would be a Sunday thing, but it's not always a Sunday thing. There are weekday funeral services. I have some pretty strong feelings on this ingress egress, but I don't think it's part of this agenda item. I would agree with you. I agree with you, Nate. I agree also. Regarding the pharmacy, Brian, did I hear correctly that um, it may not necessarily be a brand new business in there, but uh, possibly a, a, an already existing pharmacy might move in there? Exactly. We're in, we're in talks with local pharmacies. You know, we want to make sure it's not a CVS or a Walgreens or anything like that. Thank and, and you. We, and we don't do retail pharmacy at Door County Medical Center. Uh, so we're in talks with other local pharmacies. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. And then does the does does the medical facility currently in Fish Creek just remain as it is once the facility here in Sister Bay opens? No, those physicians in Fish Creek will be moving into this Sister Bay facility 
Um, and then we'll have some internal discussions about whether or not we have a purpose for that building in Fish Creek or whether or not we want to sell it. Thank you. Sure. The sidewalk that's along Highway 57, I think we're all very excited about. Um, but do I see it kind of end right at the corner and not continue around um, to the driveway? And it is, was there a reason for that? Um, the main reason is because there is no sidewalk on Canterbury Lane on either side of the street going to the east. So it was added to improve the parcel. Um, we're going to be adding curb and gutter where there was not and uh, providing that connection to the sidewalk that was newly installed opposite on Canterbury Lane, continuing on 57. But there is no, there's no connecting sidewalk going down Canterbury Lane on either side of the road, nor is it curbed. It is ditched in a rural section. So it was not continued down since there was no sidewalk down there to connect to. How would you, even though there is, there would be no connection, I understand that this is many hundreds of feet of continuing it to Applewood. Mm -hmm. We are, the plan commission is trying to make our community and especially uptown um, a more walkable community where people can use um, different modes of transportation than always being um, in a motorized vehicle. Um, I think that that could be a great advantage, um, even though there's nothing on Applewood at this time, at least it gives some safe access to Applewood. Um, I, I would be interested in hearing about what other plan commission members um, think about that idea or if I'm off base. Base for that. Pardon? I said you're completely on base. There's precedence for developers of in commercial districts continuing the sidewalk for the safety, for the health, safety, and welfare of the public at the developer's expense. Marge, did you say something also? I said I hadn't even thought about it, but it's a good idea. Okay. Well, this one thing that is lacking in here, other than that sidewalk, is consideration for any other transportation other than cars. And that's yeah. that's not just uh, uh, this development thing, that's all of America thing. Um, I would hope that you would consider putting in some sort of bicycle parking there, I mean, I, it, there may not be much demand now, but if there's if there's no parking for it, there will absolutely be no usage. Um, and I think that when we put infrastructure in for pedestrians, we're going to have infrastructure that doesn't do anything for a while. But this is the time to put it in. We're not going to go back and 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 have, ask you to. We can't ask you to put sidewalk in after the fact, but we can ask you for it to do it now, which makes sense, in my opinion. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure how it works in Sister Bay, but I know that local, in Sturgeon Bay here, uh, you, the, the city can require you to put a sidewalk in and it's just done on a special assessment basis where we would be, we would be billed for our portion of that sidewalk when it's put in. Is that uh, how that gets worked in Sister Bay? I don't think we have ever done that. I, okay. I think now was the time to do it anyway. Because it's it, this may not have a connection on the other side of it, but it has a connection on the one side that this is going to have traffic. So will you require the parcels on the other side of the road to do that as well? Or is it just going to be our parcel? I, I think it would just be your parcel right now. Okay. It would be a start. It would be a start. You know, yeah. I mean, we, we are keep in mind we are spending uh, almost $100,000 on curb and gutter along the highway there that is not existent as right now. I think uh, making a request to run it to the driveway is, is uh, completely acceptable at this point, but this, just all of a sudden say that we need to, to run it the entire length of the property. That's, uh, you know, we're talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars to, in order to do that. Well, I bet you you could save that if you took off the wings off the building. Sure, we could put, we could we could build a box there instead. 
if that's what I'm just said. saying, it's all it's all relative. Sure, but I thought we were trying to build something aesthetically pleasing to match the uh, community and what you know the beautiful buildings that exist there already. Sidewalks part of the villages impact fees because there would be an essential next. Mary Kay, you've got something going on with your microphone. You're sounding very muffled. Would would sidewalks for this specific project fall under the village's impact fee um, provisions? Because the essential nexus of creating the additional traffic would be applicable to this project? I would say no. Historically, it's not part of the impact fees. But sidewalks are covered under impact fees in the state. Correct. Okay, just, just a question. Wasn't sure of the answer. I'd like to, um, first of all, compliment your landscape plan. It is the most complete and comprehensive and attractive plan I have ever seen. I like um, your choices of, of trees and plants and perennials. I just, I just think that you are due a lot of kudos for that plan. Um, I'd like to get back to um, some questions that I have on parking. Um, I, could not tell, did you design the parking spaces um, to be nine by 20? Is that the dimension of each space? Yeah, the, the dimensions of the stalls are shown on drawing C200. Um, you can see the dimensions of the parking stalls at nine by 20, and you can see the dimensions of the drive aisles at 22 feet in okay. all instances with the exception of the through lane single train traffic, which is uh, 20, a little under over 20. Okay. D apparently too small, could not see that. Okay, excellent. Um, do, you, do you have a space for loading and unloading? I know you have a place for an ambulance to pull into, but where will your deliveries be made? Yeah, that's the, that'd be the same site. Um, you know, ambulance, it's pretty infrequent actually to call an ambulance uh, for the clinic. It, it does happen. And, and now currently in our offsite clinics, we have to take patients through the front door. So that's why we designed this one. So it'd be easier to bring a patient out the back door and have the ambulance load there. But you're right. Primarily that door is going to be used for employees entering and exiting and, and for deliveries. And there is a, a door adjacent on the other side of the building where employees will come in I would suppose that occasionally a delivery could be made in that door too. It actually comes right into where our nurse station is. Uh, so if it was medical supplies, something like that would be delivered right there as well. Okay. And um, because for the size of your building, um, you would be required according to code to have three spaces for loading and unloading. Um, but with... Um, I think a two thirds majority of the plan commission, um, we could probably override that if we deem that that is unnecessary for this particular um, uh, type of facility. Um, is there, but we do require 250 square feet for a loading and unloading and is, is that, do you, is there that amount of space there? That would certainly be met by the ambulance uh, area in the rear of the building there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and just just so everyone's aware, we don't get we wouldn't get uh, like large semi trucks delivering there. Yeah. Uh, most of the products are either brought by a FedEx or UPS truck, or uh, we have a courier that delivers in uh, our. Um, our medical products from the base here in Sturgeon Bay up to Sister Bay. Okay. And and I'll just add, uh, this is Pat with Grafe, um, that area from the corner of the parking area to the back of that is almost a thousand square feet. It's 24 feet wide, which a typical drive lane in a road is 12 feet. So it's as wide as a two lane road 
um, almost a thousand square feet in area. And in addition, that dumpster enclosure area has that little pull-off area that is also another uh, 20 feet wide by 40 feet long. So there's ample area for overflow, if you want to call it that, to get to that number of loading areas if necessary. Okay, thank you. So on um, the C200 sheet, um, are these um, inside the parking lot? Are, are these landscaped um, islands? Yes, they are. They are okay. curbed, full head curb islands. Okay. And um, for the size of your parking lot, um, uh, two and a half percent of the interior parking needs to be landscaped with peninsulas. Do you have a calculation on what percentage of those islands are? Or will you be able to get that to us next time? Yeah, I, I could do it quickly here. Um, just I know from a green space standpoint on the overall parcel, um, we have almost 44% of open green space where the code requires 20 um, based on this zoned area. Um, but the calculation for the interior landscape islands um, and keep in mind, and depending on, you know, that we have that larger island that's interior to the parking lot around the turn, the turn lane off the main entry, um, in addition to the other six interior landscaped islands scattered throughout NCAP islands on the parking bays. Um, so um, from that standpoint, there should be plenty of space, but we can easily get you that number. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. What will the hours of operation be? D days of the week? Uh, currently, we see patients from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the Fish Creek Clinic, and the rehab hours are inclusive of, of that time frame. So uh, I would anticipate that to be uh, at least what we, what we start with. You know, there may come a day where we decide evening hours would be uh, preferred by the community or earlier morning hours or something like that, but typically 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday only? Monday through Friday only, again, initially. You know, if there comes a day when it seems like the community would, would welcome us to do a Saturday morning clinic or something like that, we might consider that as well. Okay. Um, on page 109 of our packet, there was something that I didn't understand. Um, let me try to pull that up. Oh, Bo, you're just going to go to it? In the first sentence under the introduction, it talks about that this property encompasses 3.4 acres of land, but 3.6 acres will be disturbed. How are you on to somebody else's property or is that in uh, encountering um, the right of way where the sidewalk goes? That includes the area along the Wistot right of way in 57 to put in the curb and gutter and the sidewalk. Okay, thank you for that clarification. There are other small areas on Applewood where we are doing grading just beyond the property line to get drainage to work to the existing inlets as well. So just um, to be clarified, there are some small areas where we are going just outside the right of way in that ditching to match um, grades. So there are a couple other areas as well. Okay. Um, we had a couple questions about lighting. So, what I saw was that they are going to be 20 feet tall and that they are going to have motion sensors set on them to be at a constant 50% uh, output. But then when the motion um, light detects something, they will go to 100%, uh, one fixture, stays on for five minutes, another one stays on for 15 minutes. 
Um, is there a reason that you want the entire parking lot lit at 50% um, all, all night long? Well, most of the time when we do these kind of sensor um, operated uh, illumination levels, it's done for one reason or two reasons, really one safety on the low end, because we want to have an area that, you know, from a police standpoint and other, you know, safety and security measures, there isn't dark spaces that people can hide or, or move around. We want those secure. Um, and we, but we don't want to also imp you know, impose any light transfer or, or light pollution excessively beyond what is needed for the facility. So we want to get those levels down purely for security and for safety of the site, um, but also be sensitive to the community and the adjacent residents and businesses next door. The sensor will go up when it's used. We've done these on bike trails. We've done these on pedestrian bridges because we turn them, we, when people are, when motion's detected, the illumination will increase for that limited amount of time and then go back down for both energy savings and for just safety of people operating and working through those areas. So really two combinations. One is for safety and security. One is for illumination for the people using those areas at the higher levels. So it's really a best of both worlds. You're, you're not having something too high all the time or too low where it's not a secure site. Because I, I know when um, SCANned uh, did their addition and some, some lighting um, was missed in their project and um, their lights are very tall and you can see it, you know, for miles away, it looks like a, you know, a football stadium lit up. Um, I do, I did see the drawing where it is zero at the lot line. Is that correct? It's all downlit. Yeah, these are cutoffs um, and then also meeting the light trespass requirements of the city. And, and truthfully, you know, a 20 foot, um, you know, a lot of parking lots, you go to big box retailers or even grocery stores, you're looking at a 30 to 35 foot height. So 20 is fairly low for a parking lot. Pedestrians get to 12 to 15 and 20 is kind of a low end of a parking lot height because um, typically we see them 30 to 35 feet at times. Yeah, I think scanned is somewhere between 30 and 35. Yep, you're right on the money. And it's just awful. So, okay. Um, and then there were, I was curious to know, um, what LED bulb color will you be using in these? The cool white, the neutral white, the warm white? Boy, you're really getting me to play electrical engineer on here. <laughs> um, I, I, if you don't know the answer <laughs> yet, that's fine. Yeah, I, I've been around the block long enough in my career, but I'm a civil site guy by heart, and I didn't look at it that close to be able to tell you offhand uh, what the electrical design. So I'm going to have to follow up with you and Bo on that. I apologize. I just don't know. I'd have to study the plans myself a little bit to find it. Okay. I don't want to hold you up. Okay. Um, Bo, you do not need to pull this up, but on page 125 was the endangered resources preliminary assessment. And this is new to me. I, I have in my 20 years um, on the plan commission, I have never seen one of these. And so I'm just curious is why was this done? Um, what can you tell me about it? As part of our um, DNR NOI submittal, that's our stormwater notice of intent, um, they will screen typically for endangered species and endangered species resources. In fact, one of the check boxes, if you will, on the online application indicates um, not only to have you looked at the site for wetlands, have you reviewed the uh, Wisconsin wetland inventory on their uh, surface water data viewer, but also have you um, done any screening, they call it, for endangered or threatened species. So um, this is an exercise that we go through on every submittal we do to DNR um, for a stormwater NOI. Um, maybe it's not included in your submittal packets by all firms, but it's a pack, it's a part of the overall package that we need to submit to DNR. Um, and that is what we want you guys to see as well, because um, there is parallels in what your code requires and the DNR. So that is something that is required by DNR. Um, it's a uh, an online search that can be done by anybody. And uh, that's part of the exercise we go through with DNR permitting. So, so you said it's part of the permitting process of the stormwater NOI? 
it's a stormwater notice of intent is the, yeah. the permit application. Um, it's part of the RAP permit, W-R-A-P-P, -P, Wisconsin resource. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to think. It's, it's a combination permit that covers water, waterway impacts, grading, stormwater, wetland impacts. It's, it's a combination permit. If you look up WRAPP DNR, it'll pop right up, I guarantee it. Okay. All right. So this is more of a, um, a comment uh, to the rest of the plan commission um, wow. that because we have never seen anything like this before, I'm wondering if uh, we should we not be uh, talking about this for all of the projects within the village. And right. we can uh, put this up for discussion on um, our next meeting to have a more thorough conversation about that. Um, I'm just going through all of my notes. Um, I would like to clarify something with the plan commission um, that was on the report, um, and it was also brought up um, earlier, and that is um, the height of the building is 40 feet, 8 inches, and um, our zoning code states that it should be 35, our maximum of 35 feet. We did have the conversation a while ago on including um, medical centers and uh, other facilities of this nature as an essential service, um, but that has yet to be adopted into the code. Um, I, it is not there yet. Um, I just wanna bring that to everybody's attention, but by the time we get to um, finalizing this project, um, it, it should be adopted. And those were all of my questions. So you answered um, all of them really well and satisfied. Um, I guess the only thing I, I would ask is that we extend the sidewalk. And Denise, I know also there were a couple of neighbors who had questions. It's obviously up to you, but we're willing to answer those if anybody has those. Okay, Betsy, uh, is Betsy still on? Looks like she's there. Okay, if you wanna unmute yourself, Betsy, um, if, there's, uh, if you did not hear conversation or answers to the questions that you had um, throughout all of our conversation, uh, you have the opportunity to ask it now. Thank you. And I appreciate the um, sort of um, comprehensive uh, uh, nature of this conversation and the questions that you all have asked. Um, I, I am interested to know that you do not anticipate at this time um, being open on Sundays. Uh, is that correct? That, that, that's correct, Ms. Rogers. Um, we don't have any, we have at times had Saturday hours for some of our clinics in the past, uh, but we've never been open on Sunday would not be my preference to, to do so. Yeah. We of course have various activities during the week, but um, um, I, I don't anticipate that they would be affected by, um, by what you have planned there. Um, I would be with, um, um, a couple of members of the Mary Kay, I think um, I, I would be really interested in um, alternative um, access possibilities to the parking lot, uh, something off Highway 57. I don't know if the State Highway Department permits that at this point, um, but um, obviously from our standpoint, um, minimizing the level of traffic on Canterbury Lane um, is, is a matter of concern for us. Uh, but otherwise, I have, um, I have no additional questions. 
I think we may have an answer to that alternative access off of Highway 57. Bo, do you remember what the DOT allows? I mean, if we have the intersection here of Canterbury and Highway 57, how many feet is it before they allow another access point? I don't have that off the top of my head. I know. Okay, I thought maybe you would remember. Okay. It's quite a bit though. It's, yeah, it's it's a bit, it's that's the trickiest part. I don't foresee them being able to get another driveway out there because you have the Birchwood Lodge driveway kind of dead smack in the middle now adjacent across. Um, and the DOT really frowns upon turning, you know, making four-way intersections out there. We've had those conversations before in the past on other parcels. And they usually, the DOT, if there is an access point already, they really steer you to using what's already there. Yeah, I would predict if they would make a request, they would say that they have access off of Canterbury and Applewood. They wouldn't want any other driveways. That's that's always been their motto. If there's an off-road, they're going to go that route. Um, just on that subject, um, do the... Do the uh, designers anticipate that all the ingress and egress will be on Canterbury Lane or do they see some of it going out on uh, Applewood? So I, I think the majority would be in and out on Canterbury Lane. However, I will say, um, as you're I'm sure aware, Scandia Village does have a couple of vans that they run to transport their residents. Mm -hmm. Currently, they transport their residents to our Fish Creek Clinic. Um, you know, obviously, it'll be a much shorter drive for them now, and I would anticipate that traffic using the Applewood Lane entrance. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, overall, I see this as a as a real plus for for Sister Bay, um, and and our concern, of course, is that it just doesn't impact um, the life of of our parish. Um, and I I trust. Uh, the plan commission to to oversee this and um, and and make sure that that's that's the case. So I appreciate being able to sit in on this. Thank you. Thank uh, you. We want to be a good neighbor, Ms. Rogers. So please, at any time, if you have any questions or anything we can do for you, please let me know. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Jim Salinsky, did did you have any other comments as a neighbor? Sure. Um, just a couple. I'm assuming this isn't a 24 hour pharmacy since you said there are normal business hours. Correct. Just normal business hours. Right. And then um, and I appreciate the discussion on the on the parking and the traffic and so on. I, I you know, I hadn't thought about it, but um, Chief Hecht's concern about that being the, the one and only artery to scan. I'm not sure where Applewood lets out. Um, you know, could be a concern if there was an accident in the entryway or something like that. And then, you know, there are a good number of ambulances and so on that uh, go down that, down Canterbury. So, um, you know, I hope that that, this isn't the end of that discussion that maybe we do look at uh, finding another entrance to that facility. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Did um, the one thing um, that nobody commented on, good, bad, or otherwise, um, was the was the architecture? Um, is everybody fine um, with the plans that were presented? I have I to admit that those those metal cross bases didn't quite make sense to me, but I, I did kind of like the ship like or heavy wood feel to it? I sort of liked the roof because it sort of reminded me of waves. It sort of fit in. Okay. If there's no major objections to that, that's a good thing. I think Does they did a pretty good job with the architecture, but <clears throat> we do have somebody who's politely raising their hand using that feature here. Sarah L. Is Sarah L a neighbor? Yeah. Hi there. No, this is Sarah Lancaster with Peninsula Pulse. Um, and I apologize if this was asked already. I was having some connection issues um, here, but I was just wondering anticipated overall cost and timeline for the project, if that had been discussed. It was in the packet. I think it's close okay. to $15 million. Um, I, do, I don't remember the timeline. Okay. 
I can clarify that if you'd like to uh, know. Uh, generally speaking, um, what we're trying to do is just some early site prep work yet this fall uh, once we get approval from uh, both the village and the state. Um, and really that entails just generally site grading um, and possibly some of the utility services. Um, then the project is basically gonna hold until the spring, um, early spring of 22 um, with a targeted completion by the end of 22. So um, the hope is to get some preliminary work done yet this fall, uh, depending on when approvals come in. Um, but the bulk of the work is gonna start in early spring of 22 and be completed by the end of the year. That's a rough outline. Okay. Obviously details to be developed, but that's our timeline. All and, right, thank you very much, appreciate it. Sarah, Sarah, you may be aware already, we've already had some initial discussions with Miles about um, you know, putting out some information publicly about, about this clinic. We, we were essentially just waiting for this meeting uh, before we did that. Yeah, he had filled me in on that. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Does Plank Commission have any other um, conversation that they want to have? Otherwise, a, a preliminary. Um, I got to want to make sure you guys heard heard what I re requested. You add there is some some sort of alternate parking for something other than cars there. And that doesn't have to be a huge thing. That shouldn't be a huge dollar amount, but I think it's really, really important to ask all the developments in the community to do that moving forward to make it more accessible. Bicycle paint, yeah. Makes sense, Nate, thank you. And uh, I don't know if we have um, a majority of consensus on extending the, the sidewalk from Highway 57 down um, Canterbury if that would be part of the motion of the preliminary approval also. I'll make the motion with including the sidewalk from 57 to their Don Canterbury. I'll second it. Do we? Oh, I'm sorry. Motion by Bell, second by Grotzmacher. Your question? Um, I was just gonna ask our team if we had a sense of how much that would cost. I, I believe it was about $100,000 to run it from Canterbury to the, I guess that would be the south end of the, or east end of the lot. Yeah. So, it, you know, probably about equal to that. Uh, Jim or um, anybody from Grave, would you agree with that? It's about 400. It'll be a little over, if we go down to Applewood, it's a little over 400 feet of length from where it shows right now. Um, we would have to do curb and gutter if we're going to do sidewalk. Um, you're not going to have room in there to do ditching between. So effectively, you're adding 400 feet of curb and gutter in addition to about 2,000 feet of sidewalk if it's a five-foot wide walk. So um, just rough numbers. Um, well, hold on here. <clears throat> we shouldn't be hearing this. I mean, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Okay, but this is not this is not something that should we should the plan commission should be hearing. Okay, I mean that, that that may be. I'm I'm just trying to understand. I mean, you can appreciate we have yeah. a, an approved budget from our board that we're trying to live within, and I'm just trying to understand. You know, if we're adding a significant, substantial cost to the project here, I just need to understand that. Yeah, you, then, uh, hand by chief. I mean, we're we're trying to spend all the money on aesthetics and making sure we have the layout right to provide the services within the building. Chief Heck. I would just offer, and I don't know if uh, Dan Klansky is on here. Um, there's no storm sewer there either. So I think you're, you're, you're starting to go down a road that has maybe no end to it as far as now you're gonna curb and gutter it, but where's the water in the curb gonna go? Yeah. So you He's have not. to be a little careful on the, the unintended consequences of what you're asking for. He's not on the call, but that is a good point. That is a very good point. Right. That's, that's that's a bridge too far then, if that's the case. It doesn't have to be abandoned at this point. We just need more answers. Yeah. I'd like it to stay in. There's certainly, by the calculations they just verbally mentioned, there's plenty of green space. Mary Kay, you're, <clears throat> it's hard to hear you again. When you get closer, it's much easier. 
Whatever it is. Sorry, I was just talking about the calculations that they did just now verbally were, were very good for green space. So I don't think it's something that should come off the table. I think it's something that needs more research. And I think in terms of health, safety and welfare, if it can be done, it's something that we need to explore. You know, not this second, maybe it needs to be taken out of this motion, but I'd like it to stay as a potential condition. I guess I, I'd be inclined to hear what you're saying, Mary Kay. Maybe we pull it out later because it's not something they're going to do on, on prep for quite some time. Just right. be careful with the language because this is not a conditional use request. We cannot impose conditions. So how do we word that, Bo? Well, I mean, I, I'm scratching my head here because I don't think you really can. We don't have anything in our code that would require sidewalks around the whole entire um, outside of the property there. I'm I, I just, I don't. Okay, so we'll, we'll pull it out of the motion and we'll still ask for it though politely, understanding that they can very politely decline if they don't want to. I, I will, I, if Marge will rescind her second, I will rescind my motion and amend it. I rescind. Okay, I let me, motion before you make that motion, Nate, um, okay. let me just state that um, I will review the code more in depth. Um, I would imagine it may be in the land division code, which I did not reference uh, this evening um, when I was going through the plans. Um, but I do believe that um, sidewalks, um, we can probably ask for that. I just need to find it. So I agree that um, we're and they are the implementing sidewalks. It should be noted. They're putting it along 57. So okay. they well, are. can I finish my thought? I'm sorry. Um, so I don't want to lose sight of the conversation. Um, the motion's been uh, rescinded. And uh, next time when we meet, um, we will talk uh, in the meantime to Dan Klansky, um, our Department of Public Works guy and have him um, chime in, um, most likely come to the meeting and have him inform us on uh, what that would mean. And um, if I find anything in, in the land division code, um, that's all that I wanted to say. We got hands raised. Uh, yes, Brian. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to be clear. We're, we're not against the, the sidewalk. In fact, within the last few years, we added sidewalks completely around our campus here, here in Sturgeon Bay. And the way we did that, as Andy mentioned earlier, is we worked with the city on a process where they would build them and, and then assess us for those. And the benefit of doing it that way is, one, we could budget for it. Two, we could, we could finance it and spread it out over a number of years. And so you know, we're certainly not opposed to adding sidewalks. It's just, um, we're, we're just trying to live within the constraints of the budget that we have for this project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris? I think his hand was raised to the previous point. I don't, it's not. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I took it back down. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, Nate, would you like to go ahead then? So it's a motion to give preliminary approval to the Door County Medical Center. Providing that, that they to... have alternate parking. Yeah. I, I don't even mean I don't know if I can make that a condition. I'm 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 happy enough making that a request. Okay. Uh, not, not formalizing it. Okay. All um, right, motion by Bell. Second. Second by Grutzmacher. Any further discussion? Talk about the lighting again at a future date, just to- Oh, for the color, yeah. Well, not just color, but also, you know, I understand protection and, you know, safety and lighting and whatnot, but um, I, I would, I would just like to discuss it a little bit more. Okay, that's all. Do we, do we want to think about giving them a direction in color? I mean, I know which color way I'd like to go. I, I mean, I, I pay way too much attention to light bulbs, but 
Um, I certainly would like to see it on, the, on a warm, warmer color, but I don't know if there's safety implications or whatnot. So instead of asking them to come up with it, we, we might be able to, at this point, ask them for a color and it may make no difference for them. Let us know what color you'd like. I like warm white. Anybody else have a feeling on that? I think is the I think it, the cool white is the really white white light, correct? Blue. It's a blue white. It's, right. It's a blue. Yes, it's a blue. Very right. sterile looking. Yes, and and a little bit glaring because it's so white. Um, mm -hmm. I I agree. I would prefer the warm white. It's a little 3, more 000, subtle. 4,000K is what I'd love to see. Just as long as we don't have, just, just as long as this isn't going to be a lighthouse. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, it, when it first came up, hey, this is Miller Caldwell. When it first came up, I, I would recommend the warm white anyway. That's what we'd like to go. I think that that works best with the, with everything surrounding it as well as the architecture and the color. So. I agree, I agree with that color light. And I wasn't looking to make that part of the motion. I was just looking. Sometimes when people leave plan commission, we say, figure it out. And it's it's easier when we can say, well, this is what we'd like. And then yeah. you can say, well, you can't. Like, I was going to ask. Yeah, I was going to I was going to jump in and just say, what color would you like? And we would yeah. let Andy be into it. OK, so we need to vote now. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I've lost sight of what the motion was with all the stuff we talked about after that. Can I read it back? Is that okay? Go ahead. Okay. Um, a motion was made by Bell, seconded by Gretzmacher, that the plan commission grants preliminary approval of the site plan, the grading and erosion control plans, the utility plan, the landscaping plan, the construction detail sheets, the floor plans and building elevation drawings, the lighting plan and the electrical system and mechanical plans, as well as the stormwater management plan that have been submitted for the Door County Medical Center Sister Bay Clinic that will be constructed on the lot that is the subject of the previously mentioned CSM as presented. Yeah, you can take the CSM part out. Okay. Okay, all those in favor respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Great conversation. Well, thank we wish you. you the thank best you. of luck. Thank you. We're thank really you excited about it. Thank you very much. We are too. Good. Very. Thank you all. Thank you. Very excited. <laughs> okay. We've been going for a couple of hours. I suggest we um, take about an uh, eight minute uh, break and uh, reconvene at 7.35. Okay. Deal. Yeah. Okay, agenda item number four, further discussion regarding the request from Lance and Bridget Crane for a conditional use permit that will allow a residential condominium project to be constructed on the property located at 10607 Little Sister Road, 10611 Little Sister Road and 10620 Little Sister Road and review of revised plans as re requested by the plan commission. Correct, so at last meeting there was a discussion and uh, a list of questions that were unanswered that plan commission was looking for clarification on it looks like uh, the cove development team has answered those questions um, i'm going to turn it over to anaj the project manager there um, i know he wanted to go through the presentation um, go ahead uh, thank you Bo, and thank you plan commission members appreciate the time this evening uh, i know it's been a long night for you guys already so i will try to answer the questions from our previous meeting, our August 24th meeting as um, you know, efficiently as possible and completely. I think the best thing that I can do to do that, uh, Bo, I think you've allowed me to share my screen. Correct, you can share your screen. Okay. So if everybody can see this, I'm just going to use this document, which is uh, available to everybody uh, in what we submitted and go through the summary of responses. And these were the questions that were given to us by plan commission. And so they've been consolidated and we've answered you know, everything to the best of our ability. Uh, first of all, there was a request of videotaping the road conditions. So Bodwin has gone out to the site and they have provided that 
I believe they provided a Dropbox link to staff. And just for your benefit, I've also kind of pulled it up here. Um, if you guys would like, I can play it, yeah. or at least one of these videos. And this is uh, the drone going down Little Sister Road. Maybe I won't play all of it, but this is available to everybody. Okay, excellent. Um, and then we also have two additional videos which you guys can view, just different lighting, better lighting, um, you know, another angle. So there's two additional videos on that. So total of three videos to address that topic. Uh, next is we had the topic of the FAR calculation. So speaking with staff, uh, which uh, we really appreciate kind of your help in the last month. You really helped us kind of go through all these questions and make sure they were complete. So we appreciate that. So on the topic of FAR calculation, on the first page of the civil plans, um, and I'm, you know, Bo Bodwin was telling me that again in the package that you guys have, like last time, this page was not showing up correctly. So I apologize. Correct. <clears throat> So apologies for that, but hopefully you can see it correctly on my screen right now. Uh, so the FAR calculation, or maybe I'll just go from top to bottom. Really the, the proposed green space is on the inland parcel is gonna be 72%, so above the 40% minimum. And then on the waterfront parcel, it'll be 80%, well above the 40% minimum. The floor area ratio for the inland parcel is 12.17%. 12, 12 and then for, for the waterfront parcel, it's right under 6%. Is, I think we should have a copy of that. Absolutely. No. Um, sorry, we can, this, yeah, this plan, it should show up Bo, in the Dropbox link that I provided because it does show up in that link. I'm not sure what's going on when it's turned into a PDF for plan commission that it's not showing up. Yeah, I think Anaj is correct for that. Our version that we're getting in the Dropbox works, but something in our system, when we try to convert it to a PDF, it's it's condensing the file a little too much, I think. But we have a, a correct version in the office. Okay, that'll be part of... Yeah, we'll make sure it gets included in like a, the development agreement or a, you know final approval information. Yeah, we okay. can do this part of the exhibits. And did Bodwin do the fire calculation? Who did the calculation? Yes, they did. And, okay. and yes, they did. Um, next is, you know, we appreciate plan commission members uh, keeping an open mind and like taking a practical view of the loop sewer and water. We understand that was a pretty important issue. So what we had done with the assistance of Bo is set up a meeting between Bodwin, DPW, and um, Fire Chief Hecht. And so the email that was attached to the, the presentation here is what was sent by Chief Hecht. And so I just want to pull that up because ultimately we took their direction regarding you know, what they would prefer on the site. And so there were several things that they requested um, that ultimately I think solve or get to the topic of a loop sewer and water, but maybe on, not in the same way that plan commission intended or was thinking about it, but it is what DPW and fire chief want. So we did add an internal fire hydrant to the project where the water lines cross and I can pull that up. It'll be in the utility plans here. So you will see that over here. Um, next, we have um, specific locations were agreed by sewer and water department and fire department. That's written in relation to the fire department. Um, essentially location meets operational needs of the department. Location meets the requirements of the sewer and water department. These were more comments from Fire Chief Hecht. Um, next was changes the location of the fire hydrant at the north end of the development. So that is referring to 
this fire hydrant over here. So that's what it's been changed to. Oh, I'm sorry. Where, I'm sorry, go ahead. Where was it on that plan? So it is, sorry, I'm messing up my tabs here. It is on the north end. So if I zoom out right at the entrance. Okay. And so it's our understanding it's for better flushing and then for future extensions that may come from the public sewer and water so it can be looped. So it's just allowing for access, uh, which is I think ultimately the intent. Then we also added isolation valves at each hydrant. Again, this is more of a comment from the fire chief. All hydrants must meet the village standards and the specific brand that they would like. We also had to add a culvert and yard drain near Gulf Road. Sorry, keep going to the landscaping plan. And may, I mean, Bodwin can specifically point to that one. And Skylar, if you're on, let me know where I should be pointing to for the culverts. I am on, yes, uh, your cursor was on right there. There's a, a culvert that's labeled STM for storm drain that goes right okay. underneath the roadway at that point. Okay. Uh, next, add main line valves to allow a portion of the system to be shut off or as needed, the two total valves to be added. So we did add that. We had to improve the cul-de-sac diameter. So what you'll see is we had to make sure that there was enough room for their ladder to extend. And so we did increase that. Um, Next, we, okay, so yeah, that's, we had to verify that the driveway met the diameter entry, or sorry, the entry driveway met the diameter. So this was widened. And then they asked us to remove the intermediate access road. So essentially we widened this, but there was another road that was coming off, which I guess it wasn't really serving a great purpose. So we ultimately widened this for access. And Skylar, let me know if I'm missing anything that you may have improved. Uh, I think you're covering it pretty good. The only thing I would offer is uh, towards the end of the packet, sheet C500 shows that fire turning radius. You can see the vehicle path. You're talking about this one or another sheet? Uh, it would be another sheet. It's, I think it's 12 of 14. Okay. I'll just go to that. Yep, so here's the radius. And I think this is the drive lines, yep. So that's, um, you know, the changes that were made to really create a more practical plan Um, next, we had the request of adding uh, trees uh, every 40 feet, and we did do that with a revised landscape plan. Uh, when we read the code, it said, you know, it could be on one side or the other. We did, we did it on both sides. We did do the trees on both sides every 40 feet. I think one thing we'll just have to be careful of is that the trees over here, right over here, do not interfere with that turning radius. And that's why you don't see them right here. While you're on that plan, um, mm -hmm. I was looking at uh, the GIS map um, when I didn't see any tree plantings um, along um, Little Sister Road behind, behind those units. Um, are you keeping all, there were, it was very difficult to see on the one plan in our packet to blow it up so much um, on what trees were going to be removed across, uh, I think the entire property. So is are, the bulk of the landscaping that is behind those stone fences, is that all staying? Because, you know, otherwise street trees would be appropriate here also. Um, couldn't Couldn't really tell from what was being removed 
in that area. Denise, I just want to make sure I understand your question. Do you mean the trees in this area right here? Yes. Long yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we do, and that's kind of the maybe it's the next topic. Um, and I will get to the tree cutting plan, but I can answer it right now. We do have this inland tree, um, tree cutting plan for the inland parcel. And so we do show on here what's being removed and what's being kept. A lot of the trees are being kept except what's part of stormwater and what's being removed for grading. So a lot of the trees along this are being kept. Okay. It's the ones in black that are being removed. Okay. Um, and if when have, I blew it up enough that I could read and see, it was just all blurry and it, I couldn't differentiate the blue and the black on my computer. Okay. Yeah, and I, I would say one thing, we did provide all these plans via Dropbox link because we kind of realized from the last meeting that when we put everything into a PDF plan, it, it just was really difficult to work with. So Bo does have that Dropbox link. So you can go and, you know, manipulate the plans as you'd like. Um, with regards to lighting on the decks in the backyards from inland homes facing golf course, our intent is to do down lighting in the back. And we're going to address this in the development agreement so that it's not, you know, a major light pollution issue, of course. And then with regards to other lighting, we've discussed this in previous meetings, it's going to be these ballards. So it's going to be soft white lighting in ballards that are, you know, every few, every several feet. So the next topic was buffer trees planted on the property line of development and golf course. So we tried to figure out how to do this appropriately. When we go to page eight of 14. I could not find a page eight of 14 in my this packet. Was, this was for the civil plans. So page eight of 14 in the civil plans. Right. I didn't have a page eight. Bo, I'm not sure kind of what's going on. I know we sent everything with that Dropbox. I know link. we've gotten it. For some reason, somehow when we're converting it from Dropbox to PDF, we're having an issue. Yeah, I, I know we've tried to submit everything. We did review all of this with Bo a couple of days ahead of the meeting or ahead of our submittal as well. I mean, because, okay, so this is the page that, that you're on. What What Correct. is the page number in the bottom right-hand corner of this particular page? Let me just take a look here. So it's C300. Okay. That's page... Well, C300 what? was in my packet, but it's not page 8 of 14. <laughs> it's Correct. C300. Uh, I'm sorry, you know... the. Oh, go ahead, Bo. No, that's okay. It's because we have a different, the packet includes much more than just Cove Project. No, yeah. no, no. I know it wasn't our page eight. I expected it to be page eight of 14. Yeah. Not C300. Okay. Um, so when we look at this, there's pretty steep you know grade changes over here where it kind of goes down three to four feet and on top of that we have to do the stormwater retention pond so it's making it a bit awkward in terms of being able to plant trees over here and then being able to plant trees over here and when we looked at kind of the site and the golf course that's there there are trees that buffer the two properties it's just really difficult for us to plant trees along here well, when I pulled up the GIS map again of, of that area and of that property line, there are very few trees on the GIS map, the overview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I kind of was looking at that as well. And there was trees here and then more trees along here. I mean, I understand what you're saying. It's just very difficult from a grade change standpoint. I'm not saying that you would have to plant, you know, plant a line of them. <clears throat> I was just thinking, you know, where you could plant them, you could to, to have, you know, just a, additional defining the space. We mm -hmm. don't know 
what is going to happen um, with that golf course property. And, um, and we had a project recently where all the landscaping, all the buffering on a parcel was not on the project's parcel. It was on the neighbor's parcel. So if the neighbor would decide to yank out all the trees, you know, there would be, there would be no delineation, no buffer between the property lines. And I just thought that was not a great uh, precedent to set. Um, you know, do, did I, did I intend for you to plant trees every four feet? No, I don't know what your interpretation of my comment was, but just some additional plantings, you know, in that area. So I don't know if you can still, you know, add some where you can, um, but certainly I, it was not intended to be a solid line of, of trees. And I'm curious if the intent is to act as a buffer or to kind of delineate the two properties. Could we, too, could we do other types of vegetation like tall grasses, you know, that are more conducive to that environment? Because that's what's existing out on the site. You know, it's a lot of tall grasses at the moment. So we could have a nice landscaped area, you know, around each house, which we're proposing, but then maybe closer towards this property line have tall grasses. I'd like a few trees, but if you want to incorporate some trees and grasses, I, I would be receptive to that. Yeah, and I think we, I think we're just trying to also make sure, you know, that when we do plant the trees that they're going to survive. I think that's, we're just trying to be as practical as possible, that it makes sense for that area. Yeah, I just planted 33 myself about two months ago <laughs> on my property. Okay. Um. Yeah, we can definitely, you know, make sure to include tall grasses and I guess more the intent to be, to act as a buffer between the two properties. That would be great. Okay. Let me just make a note of that. Um, the next topic was kind of redesigning homes and presenting new colors. I know from our last meeting, you know, we had issues kind of with our rendering, but, you know, just they weren't looking wonderful as they should be. And so we've taken, you know, a lot of effort and a lot of time to revise uh, the plans and present new colors. So that is in your packet and I'll go to that right now. I only found a front rendering of one of the four properties. Yeah, again, I'm not sure what's happening. We've included everything. You know, we've included all three condominiums um, in, in the package. Okay. And condo A, you know, for instance, we've added transom windows. We've enlarged these windows. We've added additional bedroom windows. We've also made sure that you can see kind of this board and batten look, which I'll show a, a real life uh, example of a little bit later on here. Um, and then on some of the, these other plans, we've added these awnings uh, to kind of just enhance the aesthetics of the exterior of the house. Yeah, and, this was not in our packet. Yeah, once again, I it's the only thing is the difference in the Dropbox, the PDF. That's that's an issue on our technology side from the village side. Well, yeah. I, I just got you keep saying this, Bo, and I gotta I gotta point out that Dropbox isn't a format; it's PDF. It's converting PDF to PDF. Yeah, um, and it, I know that I have when I open the Dropbox Dropbox links, I have I have all that information showing, but when we put it into the packet, it's not all showing up. Yeah, and I, I know. Bo, you and we went through this, you know, a couple of days before the submission as well. Yeah. Again, my apologies. Is this a this. public Dropbox share or is this just a, a private direct share? Or? It, it was just a link, you know, it was a public link for uh, sent to Bo. 
And again, you know, I can, of course, send out everything once again. Well, two, two things. First of all, maybe plan commission if things are because these plans are so large that um, we need to have access to the Dropbox link and sent to us in an email. And secondly, I think that uh, once everything is converted from the Dropbox, it needs to be confirmed that every page transferred to our packet. I would actually think that we may have some other things we could do here to make this better. So we're putting single agenda items that are more than a few pages to separate packets. I know one PDF is wonderfully handy to have, but it's very cumbersome. Good idea, good idea. Well, when Bo sent me the link, I checked to make sure that everything that I got from Bo was included and it was. So somehow or other, it's it's in the conversion process. Well, this I is checked. Super unfortunate. What other pages are we missing from this? Because, like Denise said, this is the first time I'm seeing this, yeah. and our packet was 305 pages long. And, and I made a note of this on Saturday already that I couldn't find any renderings or drawings. Well, if you guys would like, I'll, I'll continue to, you know, share my screen here and sure. show you where we've revised things. So like I said, we've enlarged the windows, we've added transom windows, we've added awnings, we've shown this board and batten siding against the horizontal lap. Uh, on top of that, um, let me just show you sort of example pictures. These are just, again, some mood renderings that we've, or illustrations that we've done. Those were in our packet. Okay. Were these in your package? This is yes. an, okay. So this is, this is really mainly to serve as an example of the exterior finishes. Uh, of a similar home based on the exterior finishes, very similar of something that Deliers has done in the Door County area. And it's supposed to, most of these are earth tones that are going to be done on the Cove project. But, you know, again, similar lap or horizontal lap and board and batten. Will owners be picking their finished selections and be told that they need to be earth toned as a, as a restriction yes. or? Yes, no. we're we're sti we're sticking with earth tones. Okay. That's how they're going to be provided to the owners. And A, B, and C is as it's laid out in the plans that we presented. So I think this kind of shows it well in terms of that board and batten, the earth tones, the style of the windows. Um, you know, these will be pretty high end exteriors and materials. So hopefully that kind of illustrates uh, significant changes that were done uh, to the plans to help with that exterior aesthetic. Um, I, I know kind of going back to the last meeting, it was difficult to see this 350 foot line. So we've done that as well. It's page six of 14 in the civil plans. Okay, so what real page number is it? Cause it's not six. Uh, C200 on the civil plans. Okay. So if you zoom in here, you can see this 300 foot setback from the high water mark. And so what we did was we really looked at that 30% rule with regards to cutting of the trees. And so when we looked at our, let me go back to the tree cutting plan. We looked at the waterfront parcel again. We looked at the inland parcel again in relation to that 350 foot setback. And the conclusions that we had were, there's a total of 337 trees currently within that 350 foot line uh, or setback, I should say. We're removing 89 of them and then we're installing uh, 34. So overall there's 26% being removed. And when you count the trees being added back in, 
we're going to roughly remove about 16.3% in total. Um, next, there was questions about the 20 foot access to the water. I think we had provided that in the uh, last meeting, but maybe it just didn't show the future, uh, future easement being labeled. And so in these plans, page seven of 14. Which what real page is it? Sorry about that. It is page C201. So that's where this future easement is labeled, the 20 feet that goes down to the water. Okay. It just goes around grandma's house, but otherwise it widens to 20 feet. Um, the next question was regarding the square footage of the cranes. Uh, here's the total square footage. 4,476. Okay, um, that's the living area. What's the real square footage? I mean, I'm pretty sure that the square footage, the total that I have is 4, 000, roughly 4,500. I'm presuming if you're talking about first floor living, lower level living, okay, that's not including garage or other things. I wanted um, to know the footprint size okay and the total the total square footage of of everything not just the living space denise i was thinking about this just because these are big homes but um we do have precedents at crow's nest which are, are duplexes obviously but their square footage goes i think on the larger ones into the well into the 4,000 square foot range. And then the larger Mariner's Point units too at three stories, not including the garage, come close to that. Now, I know Crow's Nest was very controversial back when it started, when it was introduced in 2002, I think. But oh my God, comment. that's a lifetime ago. Yeah, I just I just wanted to know a total square footage because I could not read the plans. I couldn't blow them up large enough. I can get you that. I was just okay. trying to look for it myself. I know that uh, Lance and Bridget have sent that over. You know, I'll just have to take a look at the specific number. Okay, thank you. Uh, next was, what is the setback from the center line of the homes? Again, we had included that in the last set of plans. Maybe just... This was, I think, back to that PDF conversion error, but on page, so, sorry about that. This would be page, I think we're going back to C200. So you can see the 60 foot setback here from, the, from Little Sister Road. So all the homes are behind that. I think next, uh, probably the biggest topic, you know, that came up again is the garage is being 30 per, over 30% and dominating front facade. We've, you know, gone back and forth or discussed this with staff many times to try to figure out what is the way to solve this or what's correct for the development. Um, we're hoping today that plan commission can have the same you know, mindset that they had when discussing the sewer and water. And so kind of some of the things that we discussed were that these are really single family homes. And so for future home buyers, they are going to, you know, have an SUV or have a truck. And we're trying not to have them park in the driveway or park on the street. And these garages really fit two cars like that or larger cars or the ability to do that. Next, the garage side, the garage sides will not face Little Sister Road. Really, you're going to have the back of the homes facing Little Sister Road. So you're not going to be able to see these from the public road. Um, we've also added, as you can tell today, a lot of design elements, you know, on top of these garages or around these garages, such as the awnings, um, just much better siding, 
these will also be higher end, just garage doors in general. Um, we also looked at, you know, if you turn these houses or turn the garages, unfortunately, you start to get into the green space. Uh, that is really nice to have, considering that we're, I think in this development, it's, I, I think I said in the beginning of the meeting, roughly 70 plus percent uh, is green space. And ultimately, you know, as we were trying to get any sort of guidance from staff or plan commission members and others, we were just trying to understand, you know, is this code really applicable to this project? Because we went down B1 code and it has a lot of requirements from the R2, except for the other architectural standards where the 30% rule comes in. And it seems like the spirit of that portion of the R2 code has to do more with multifamily developments, which we you know, understand to be more like duplexes or two units and more. And so we're just trying to find a solution you know, that works for the future home buyers and is aesthetically pleasing. Um, you know, we're roughly, when we look at these garages and did the calculations, we're four feet off, but that's really what's kind of needed to make sure that these cars can fit. Um, I don't think anybody was asking you to make the garages smaller. And if you go to 6603.20 on page 35, um, you, didn't, you didn't include all the verbiage where it talks about shall comply with the building height and area standards, as well as the unit density requirements in the R2 district, okay. section 660312, as well as the other requirements as exist, including the requirement that the property is served by public sewer and water. So basically when it references 660312, it is the entire section. So we, we try to get this guidance, you know, early on, you know, we've kind of been asking for it for a month and we weren't getting a concrete answer, but I think above and beyond that, when we go down to the section of the R2 code where it talks about that, it's really referencing multifamily developments, you know, and we're right, trying because not- it's R2, but under a conditional use permit, that's the criteria that you need to follow. Is I mean, the R2. I guess when we look at these homes, though, they're single family homes that we're just trying not to have the garages dominate the front, which we think we're, you know. I think, okay. Oh I guess every single garage on A, B, and C protrudes the farthest out from the home. So even if you met the 30%, mm -hmm the garage protrudes, that, that's, that's a dominant factor. Instead of step, you know, either having it flush or behind, instead of the entrance, entrance being, you know, the farthest pushed back. Okay. You know, I mean, there, there were, you know, different ways to look at it. I, you know, if, we, if, you, you know, we would have definitely addressed it in that way. I th that's a really helpful comment, first of all. You know, we really appreciate that feedback. I, I think that's kind of what we were looking for is how do we, how do, you know, what do you think? And if that's kind of what you're saying that, hey, if we change this, you know, how far it is, you know, that I think we can accomplish that. Well, if you can accomplish that, that will address address the issue where we may then give leeway on on the 30 percent and so Denise, I, just now I don't want to speak for the rest of the plan commission but certainly I would feel much more comfortable by following the code by it not done because it says the word dominating the front mm -hmm. facade which every single garage dominates so just to kind of go back to your thoughts is the thought that hey if we bring this forward a little bit or bring this forward a little bit and push this back, that would help alleviate that dominating. If the garage is not the farthest facing wall, I believe it will help. No, that's, that's a very helpful, 
honestly, that guidance is kind of what we were looking for. So I, I appreciate that. Big difference. Yeah, no, that's really kind of what we were hoping, you know, to just get guidance on. So thank you. Um, we can certainly address it. You know, those, those are not big changes then. Uh, the last point that you had raised in the meeting was to work on the signage with Fuzzy, Susie, and Nissa. We're happy to do that. Uh, staff had told us that we can do this, you know, as we start going through a construction process. It's just gonna take some time to have those discussions. Understandable. Uh, but I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen here then. Unless, is there anything you guys would like me to go back to? I know that a lot of this material, you know, you didn't get, and I can read, send the link to Bo, but I think he has everything. Could you go back up to the first bullet point on the garage, your descriptions of the garage? garage you just, yeah. yeah. Um, or I should say um, the second bullet point. Um, what is the issue with seeing cars on a driveway? I mean, if you drive through the village of Sister Bay, uh, it's impossible to go down any Sister Bay street and not see cars in the driveway. What, what is, what's the problem with that? I think we just don't That's want to. Exactly change. true. Most areas of Sister Bay do have restrictive covenants that state that cars should be in the garage and even that garage doors shouldn't be open at the time. Now, are these various subdivisions enforcing these? No. It's too hard and the village isn't going to enforce them, but certainly nobody's complaining. I think the other thing is we didn't want them to end up on this drive. You know, it's just kind of, we're trying to, you know, help the situation on the front end by giving ample space here so that nothing ends up in a driveway here. I mean, I'm hopefully nobody has five cars that they're doing that, but you just never know. Right. So we kind of have to help the situation right now and just plan for it. Well, there is absolutely no reason that any vehicle, I don't care how many vehicles you have, are going to be allowed on the roadway. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we don't want that either as the, you know, in the development. If they can't fit their cars in their driveway and in, in their garage, well, then th there's an issue. Yeah. Any, anything else you guys would like me to address or I think or... if you could go back to the pictures um, of the outside that that we did not receive in our packet um, these, these ones no we saw the, those the, the drawings the drawing okay I think if we could just you know do you have all a b and c yes so this is a um yeah, I think that's probably the, the worst looking out of the three. And I think the reason why, excuse me, you may feel that is um, when you actually, you know, have this built kind of like, I'm trying to bring up the actual home that Delirious did, like this home, you know, the board and batten siding is really the, the feature that stands out. And it's going to look very clean. I think. I think it was the size of the windows to me. So these are just the transom windows, but these windows are fairly large. No, 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 not in that one. In this drawing, they they looked small and odd to me. In this, in con in uh, unit A. Yes. So these are pretty large windows when when they're going to be built. I think they're three by three, and I I'll have to go back to Delirious to just make sure of that. But we did increase the size of these. Okay. They were actually, I think, smaller before and we increased the size. Because if you kind of compare this against the door, this is fairly wider. And then this, this, actually... this, this might help Denise with A, just if you could go back to that. Would it help you, Denise, if that was broken up with like carriage, a, a carriage door on the garage with more windows? Do you just think that that's. Well, I just I, I don't know those square men. Maybe it's because they're square. They just look odd. And even if they're large, they still. 
they just look odd to me. It's it's just my reaction to them. The back of the building is it, it, much better. That's because it has more windows. Picture glass. I don't even know if it's allowed, but I mean, picture some glass in that garage door at the top and it changes the whole aesthetic of the front. I don't know if they allow that there though. Well, I don't, you know, it also depends on pri from a privacy standpoint. I don't know if it would be all glass, but no, I, I just mean some small carriage, you know, you know, carriage house style garage like, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like so like that, that's one of the garage doors that we're possibly looking at. That's neat. You know, so there's going to be a variety of, not, I shouldn't say variety, you know, there's going to be maybe a few different variations of this sort of glass, whether it's up top, whether it's on the side. And, and Naj, show your picture there. It has windows on the top there too. Are you talking about this? Your photo. No, your photo. Uh, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So this would be an example, you know, garage door. So two things I see there that, that I like. Actually, the first one that has the asymmetric window <clears throat> that breaks it up, makes the horizontal plane up quite a bit. That that helps me with that issue that Denise is having, mm -hmm. where you do have something to, to separate the, the, the vast horizontal surface. The yep. other one that you just showed a picture of also has some, some detail that also breaks that up. I think it's the big boxy flat, and maybe it's just how the illustration is done. The, the actual door might be different, but how it looks on there, it's a huge surface that's quite lacking detail or lacking anything to break it up. Yeah, I think these, what our plan is that we may have, like you're saying, kind of a way to break these up. And I think it, it just looks that way the most in this condo A, just because you see all this uh, vertical board and batten, which will look fantastic, but then your eye kind of doesn't have anything moving the other direction. So it may look plain, but in real life, it's, you know, these are pretty high-end finishes that will look nice. And Except for the garage door on this one. I'm sorry? Except for the garage door on this one. Yeah, that we can change with windows up top or on the side. All right. And one thing not illustrated in Condo A, this is Jim DeLear speaking. Uh, we, we don't have a very good illustration of the landscape. So the two windows, those two front windows on A actually drop right into the, the top of the, the kitchen counter on the interior. Below those windows, uh, that area will be landscape. So you will uh, see some native grasses and other plantings in that area. So um, you're, you're really not gonna, once the landscaping's done, that, that lower half below the windows won't be as much of a focal point. So again, this is a computer generated image that's, you know, it, it, I think it, it shows generally, but it's not 100% there as to what it's gonna look like in reality. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, the best thing we can show for just landscaping is over here but it yeah it's going to be pretty robust i mean that that one is just so much more appealing from the front with or without the landscaping if if you look at the two just much more attractive the other one look like a looks like a home this one does not look like a i, a I think well you know someone spent many like a hours home. someone spent many hours drawing this by hand and this is computer generated yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's just the nature of illustrating something. Anaj, I think what they're saying is is that just the the way that the illustration shows in the colors is is more appealing than this this this, this rendering right here. Well, you know, I, I I agree with you guys, and I get it. I'm just saying, I think a lot of that has to do with because if you look at this uh, picture, you see that it, it is more of a home. It's just those colors when you see them computer generated may not look the best on paper. The, I would encourage this you to one get... is not computer generated. It is. I'm just saying that this looks. Look at how nice many windows are there. Look at the nice windows the here one. compared to the other one. That's where you know that looks like a home. Okay. And it looks like a home because you see the entrance, you see the entrance way, you see windows. There's the overhangs over the garage and the windows. Yep. So is the hand-drawn rendering that you're showing us also B? No, that was C. 
That was C, and we've actually C. improved okay. the pitch of this roof. Yeah, that was C, which would be this one. Okay. So here's what C looks like computer generated. Again, we improved the pitch of the roof, but our illustrator did not have this when they did this. Uh, that's why the pitch might not be exactly what's going to be on C, but you can kind of get the feel of you know, the exterior. But if you looked at the computer generated, it may not look as sort of warm and inviting, but it, it will be because you know, this is what's going to end up looking like. It looks very similar. Okay. That one does. Okay. Because it's all it's all the other details. Meaning the awning and yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, we're, I guess uh, to circle back, we're here today to get approval on our proposed plans and between civil landscape and architecture. Um, and we'd like to understand kind of where we are with that. I can kind of stop sharing here. I have a, um, let me just go through my list. So in your lighting plan, do you show the lighting that's going to be on the back of the homes? I'm just going to double check. Give me one second. I think we just have to add that down lighting, but that is going to be part of our development agreement to do the down lighting. Okay, but we still need to know exactly what light fixtures are going to be used in your lighting plan, all, all lighting. Denise, this being a, a custom condominium development, they may be leaving that up to the discretion of the buyer. They're not spec building. Is that the case? Yeah, I think some of the exact fixtures, even though they're all going to be down lighting, but the exact fixtures might be, you know, upgrade packages. So it's going to vary from the condo units. Which is nice. You don't want it looking cookie cutter in a community like that. Okay. Duly noted. So I think you have answered all but four, four of the questions. You're going to get back to us on um, the exact footprint and square footage of the entire uh, residential home for the cranes. Um, you will readdress the garages. I'm trying to push them back so that they do not dominate the front facade. Um, how, how does, does the rest of the plan commission want to see, um, additional buffer trees near the property line um, by the golf course? Because I think as we talk about, and Anaj was talking about also adding some grasses, just like we did with the LED bulbs um, with the previous project for the medical center, Maybe it would be helpful if we knew how many linear feet was on the back of that property line and we determine uh, X amount of trees to be planted in that area for true direction. And then if they choose to use grasses um, intermixed in that also, I mean, it's wide open space. It gets a lot of sun. Everything should grow fabulous. Um, how does the rest of the commission members feel about that? Yay, nay. As, as you stated it, that sounds appropriate. I agree with you, Denise. I think we should have some more buffer there. 
Anaj, can you measure that? Yes, we can. I'll just have to kind of go back to Bowdoin on that. One thing I would Oh, you don't have, it doesn't show on any of the plans? Let me take a look at the civil. Give me one okay. Second. I think the other thing is we just have to be mindful of being able to plant trees where they're going to be. I understand that there's plenty of sunlight, but from a grade standpoint and where the stormwater is, I just want to be mindful of how many trees is appropriate to put there. And that's why I suggested tall grasses to act as a buffer. You know, if we say 10 trees, but really help in a healthy way, and an arborist can help with this, or Bay Lake, the landscaping contractor can help with this, maybe it's more like seven trees should be planted there in a healthy way. I just want to- And why do you think the grade has so much to do with planting of trees? I think we're also kind of getting into the next property as well. You know, we're not trying to plant these right on top of the homes. It may not be, you know, the best thing to do for those homes. Well, if, if you pull up the plan, there looks like that there is plenty of space in their backyard. Yeah, and then it kind of goes, you know, down a couple feet. I mean, we can certainly take a look at that. Uh, I'm just trying to look at the lineal feed for you. Okay. While you're looking for that, um, I will probably make my one and only um, contentious point, and that I feel that when the plan commission originally put on the conditions, and then we met um, a few months later, and then we took some of those conditions off, but looping the sewer and water was still a condition. I feel that the plan commission was manipulated um, by you talking to the fire chief and our DPW and not that you shouldn't have, and that's fine. And I'm very pleased um, with both of their input on to make this a better project, um, especially from the fire department aspect. Um, and safety issues, but I feel that, that yeah, that's just the word, uh, manipulated, that you really did not address it, and you just kind of went around the plan commission, even though it was a condition of the permit, and um, so because the fire chief and the DPW didn't say that it needed to be looped, and that if that is their opinion, that's fine, but it was a condition. So Denise, I'm not a civil engineer or an expert in that. You know, that's why we have Bodwin. I would say when we agreed to the conditions, we thought it was appropriate, but then when Bodwin really f went full in and did the plans, they realized it wasn't appropriate for the site. We weren't trying to manipulate anyone. I'm just not a civil engineer to really be able to say that it's appropriate. So when they did the amount of study that they did in the spring and summer, they said, hey guys, this is not the right thing for this development. And that's when we went to DPW, you know, and the fire chief, because we were just trying to get a technical opinion from somebody. Can this we have a chance to re-review the Bodwin information again, please? I'm sorry, Mary Kay? Uh, just not tonight, but I'd like to re-review the Bodwin information. Do uh, you mean the letter? Sure, yeah, that's that's included as part of the package. I, I don't have it in my package right now. But. Okay, we can resend that. <coughs> I think Bo, Chris has his hand up. Oh, Nate had his hand up. He was, well, I have something to say, but Chris had his hand up first. Okay, go ahead, Chris. I might be able to add some context to the looping discussion um, early on, very early on um, when we received, I think it was just very preliminary plans. The sewer and water layout for the development is, was significantly different than it is today. And at that point in time is when we, the fire department and DPW at the time um, felt that it should be looped. And, and I wanna clarify that when we said that it should be looped, looped within the development, not looped beyond the development, um, when Bodwin redesigned, and I'm assuming that probably the redesign was driven on the gravity uh, by the gravity side on the sewer side, 
um, and it changed the layout for the sewer and water within the development. It became a mute point to loop it. There's really nowhere to loop it to. If and when the village extends sewer and water down Gulf, then there would be somewhere to loop it to. And that's why we required them to bring that, that uh, hydrant and the, the water and sewer, or the water, not the sewer, because the gravity, down to the edge of the property at Gulf. So in the future, when we extend sewer and water down Gulf, hopefully catching the condos at the end, it's ready to be tied in at that second point. Thank you, I don't Kurt. know if that has any context or not. No, it's very helpful. Um, I understand that it was a condition of this, but at the same point, I know a whole lot of times in my life, there's people that are a lot smarter about things than I am, and I <laughs> defer to them. And this is one of those cases where I would defer to people that know more than I do. And if, if I know that DPW is satisfied with it and Chief Heck is satisfied with it, I don't see the outcome for the village changing as long as, as their needs are met. I don't disagree with you. I'm with you all the way. I just felt that we were used and not brought into the conversation that this was the, the route that uh, the developers were going and then all of a sudden, you know, Denise, surprise. we consulted with staff about this and we did bring in Bo into those conversations. You know, we asked what's the correct way to do this and between our civil contractor um, staff, and then we decided, hey, it, it'd be good to go and talk to DPW and, um, and the fire chief. I, I don't think it was our intent to circumvent anyone. We're just trying to get, we're just trying to get advice. Yeah, I don't see it speaking. I, I would agree with Nate uh, as well, with the exception of uh, when Nate said, there's a whole lot of people that know more than him. There's a lot more, whole lot more people that know more about things than I do. So I'm not including myself in that level with Nate, but I agree with his point. Um, I, I think that if Chris and uh, DPW say it's good, we can trust that. I agree. Okay, so Mary Kay would like to review the Bodwin information. Um, Anaj, were you able to find uh, the length of? I will need to come back to you on that. I'm looking on the civil plans. And Skylar, I'm not sure if you're still on. You could probably. I am, and actually 827 feet and four inches. Thank you. Is the length okay. of the rear lot line. So we'll we'll round off to eight twenty five. Um, okay, Anaj, you need to to answer the question that because of grade changes, why is it why is it difficult to plant a tree? I mean, that's the recommendation that we had gotten from Bay Lake, in the sense that you know you're planting new trees. Where's it going to hold on to? And also if there might be rock there, but again, that's the, when we talked to Baylick about it, you know, this is what we got, which is that it's difficult to plant there. There's, there's no might about it. There's rock there. I'm yeah. sure it might be we one also, shovel deeper than that, but it's there. We also just don't want to do, you know, more blasting than we have to, or put trees that just won't survive, you know? I think that what, what I'm thinking of is that you see a lot of cedars on very steep inclines. And I think if you start them out, and again, there's people that know more about this than I do, but if as long as we're not asking for very large trees, which smaller trees are going to do better in the long run, maybe we can get that, that maybe we can get more of them in on that incline, but not ask for them to be so tall in the beginning, because that is, that is very hard on trees and you do have a, a higher chance of failure. Correct. And those, this Lance, maybe maybe we can just work with Bay Lake um, to address what they're talking about here, which is yeah. let's let's maximize or at least let's let's address the trees that can be planted and and uh, there's there's probably enough flat spaces along there to figure something out. 
And if not, give a get a get a solid answer why. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Just trying to get my calculator to work here. So I'm just throwing out a number. So if there's 825 feet and uh, the criteria in the code is for street trees to be one every 40 feet, just using that same number, that's 20 and a half trees. So I think if we use the same criteria, that would be a fair number to shoot for if plan commission agrees with that. Did, did that 827 uh, include the retention pond? Well, it, it, it was the whole, the whole property line. Yeah. So I would imagine, yes. And so if they can't plant some there, you know, maybe they can squeeze some other places. If not, then they can come and tell us why they can't meet the 20. If that sounds fair to plan commission members. I can agree with that. Sure. Okay. Okay, so there's review of the Bodwin information that needs to be resent to the plan commission. And uh, maybe that could be sent out, um, not necessarily just with the packet, but at any time in the near future, which would give everybody um, a good opportunity to review it and not have to include it with another possibly 300 page packet. Um, so now are you talking about the um, plan set that didn't convert right? No, I don't think that Mary, Mary Kay, is that what you're talking about? I'm sorry. Are you talking, did you want to see the plan set from Baldwin's that didn't convert properly or what were you asking for? I was asking just for a refresher on what exactly came from Baldwin because we're talking months and it's not in my package tonight. I mean, if somebody has that handy and can share it on the screen, bring it on. So that's can, the stuff that Anaj was showing. Yeah, Mary Kay, that was the plans that I was showing, as well can, as I think you can asked. You show, about the, you know. Can you show? Can you refresh? You want me to show it on my screen again? Yeah. Okay, no problem. So here are the plans. It's a total of 14 pages for these civil plans. And I think this first page is always a problem, which has the FARA calculation and the green space calculation. And this is what we were referencing throughout that uh, response page. So, and probably the page that we paid uh, very close attention to today is the utility plan. So this would be C300. And that's where we were referencing the letter from Chief Hecht with regards to the fire hydrant and the sewer and water and this fire hydrant. Okay, you've answered my questions. I thought that there was perhaps some smoking gun from the past that I was missing. We did, we, we, we went through this exhaustively tonight. So I okay. have no further I can questions. Scratch that. So then you're okay, Mary Kay? I'm, I'm fine with this. Okay, okay. So uh, just information on um, uh, the footprint of the Crane's home and the total square footage, not just of living area. Uh, push back the garages so they don't dominate the front facade and uh, show us... Uh, 20 trees um, on the property line. Okay. And I, I guess I, I would be willing to, um, see, and I think that there is general consensus um, that looping the sewer and water, which is still in the condition list and still in the development agreement, 
that uh, I would make a motion that we remove looping the sewer and water from the condition list of the conditional use permit. Motion by Berto. Second. Second, Second by Bell. Any further discussion? All those in favor respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. So that will be updated. And uh, I guess we'll uh, see you sometime soon. We will get those out as soon as possible. Thank you for your time. All right. Can I, can I, I'm sorry, can I ask one question? Sure. Is, is there any reason we could move for, I guess, preliminary approval pending these three items and address those in the development? Um, because I, I know we're, we're, we're trying to we're trying to get this going. I know you guys want to make sure you're fully satisfied. I can totally respect that. But they, these are pretty simple asks. And, and to wait for another month, I think we can get these back to you very quickly. Um, so I guess I'd, I'd just ask if there's any way that we could. Um, and what through. would, if we gave you preliminary approval with those three things hanging out there, um, Bo, what, what does that mean? I mean, we gave preliminary approval to the medical center tonight, but they're not, the only thing they're going to be doing is grading before they get approval, correct? Correct. Yeah. And even, yeah, that, that is correct. Um, but to even Lance's point here, we got the development agreement um, on Sunday evening and we looked at that Monday morning and there's some extensive review at the staff level that needs to be done before it can be brought to um the plan commission for review and approval so until a development agreement is signed we can't have any construction um on the property understand right understand but i i don't think we'll be another hopefully not another 30 days in the development agreement let's say we got we go back and forth for you know, a week or two on that and, and i think within that week or two i think we'll have these um these asks from today i think satisfied hopefully so I, I guess I'm just trying to avoid another, you know, we've been at this for, and I, and I know this isn't your fault, but it's, we've been at this for 15 months and I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way we can um, get this done in the next couple of weeks. That's all up to you guys, I guess. And I, I, I would say, I mean, just to be transparent here, I, the process is likely gonna slow down as, as we move forward because we won't have an administrator at least for part of this time. Which is going to be a challenge for all of us to, to go through and that's not I'm, I'm i'm sorry about that that wasn't my choice um but it's just a reality that we're in my goal just to you know continue the transparency we we have the development agreement i plan on going through that and getting edits and comments back to uh anaj and the team um to get their review i agree i don't think it's going to take more than a week if we can have some discussion on getting that development agreement um, cleaned up a little bit to where both parties should be satisfied there. Well, can we give them preliminary approval to proceed with grading and site work? I think they've already been doing that, have you not? Well, they've been demoing. They haven't been doing any grading or any site work. We would not allow that without any type of approval in, in play from plan commission. That's correct. Okay, so we can get preliminary approval so he can do site work then. Rob? I, I, I would ask, considering all the points just made that last go around, could we consider the possibility of a special meeting on the 6th or 7th or even the 8th of October, which I believe is, Bo, that's your last, uh, you're with us till then or are you with us longer? My last day is Friday the 8th. Okay, so is there a way we could talk about or consider the 6th, 7th, or 8th having a special meeting? We already have a special meeting. We're what? preparing to revise the entire zoning code that week. I, I understand. I'm just saying if there's agreement that, you know, if, if the development agreement, if Bo is confident, we can have that short up in a week. If the cranes are confident they can have the remaining answers that came up today by then, 
could we have a special meeting to handle those things so that it would remove from the specter a preliminary approval that really doesn't clarify? Those. I'm out of town. So oh, I'm going to throw out there that after the last time an administrator left and we had a marathon plan commission session, I will never do that again. I am I, on the last day that there is a, a grabbing an administrator. I do not want to try and get a whole bunch of stuff jammed through because that was that was an absolute mistake. I feel extremely strongly about that. If this is one item that we want to put on another. Maybe we can do that, but I have a I have a very vivid memory of that meeting and the repercussions that came from that meeting, and that was not a good idea. Yeah, we're just looking for we're just looking for approval on our project, uh, not a, a marathon session. And I think we have about four items or so, three or four items to. And we have three. That 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 was not directed at you, Lance. That that's yeah, yeah, nature yeah, that we yeah, don't have. And I'm saying if it's a one item. That's one thing. I what happened in the last time that don't want to have happen again is that I want eight items. We literally had two 11 by 17 pages. I don't know if you remember that, Denise, but that was I a do. very ridiculous a, thing, in my opinion. I had was, pleasantly forgotten about it until you refreshed <laughs> my memory. Thank you. I, it's important that you remember it right now, Denise. Yes. It's very important. Yes. So we do, and I'm just throwing this out there because it's already scheduled. We do have that public hearing on the 5th. Um, for the zoning code, if we're just adding one more item, how does Planning Commission feel about that at the end? I'm sorry, no offense, absolutely not. That 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 public hearing could be going on four hours long. <clears throat> I think our concentration needs to be on our revisions to the zoning code. I've already been told by several members of the general public that they are looking forward to the comment session. I think it's going to be a, a long meeting. Yes. Denise, are you available on the 7th if we were to do it? That I day? am out of town, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. Okay. You can have it without me. I don't have to be there. Nate can be oh, in charge. Awesome. Thanks, Denise. <laughs> we, yeah. I mean, if you want to get to, I mean, I thought you were already grading because no. I didn't think that that no, we, we haven't the village no. cared whether or not you moved dirt around on your own property. No, and we're kind of running up against winter conditions because of that. So, you know, that's been a, a big issue as well. Bo just said five minutes ago that this agreement was just prepared and it still needs extensive revision and review. I, I, that was five minutes ago. Let me ask you this. If we could get site and grading and get a, just approval move forward on that, um, and, then, uh, and then if we're able to do a meeting with Nate as temporary chair on the 7th or 8th to get the other things, is that, is that possible? When is the when is the public session? I've got I've got the old date, which was the seventh, and it's obviously not then now. It's the fifth. It's the fifth. Okay. Um, I've got a cross reference another calendar here. I could do it on the seventh. Um, it's six thirty. Can anybody else do it then? Sure. I'm heading to my calendar. Mary Kay. I can't guarantee. I'm already trying to attend the hearing from Milwaukee, where I am sitting on a panel discussion. At approximately okay. the same time, so okay. I, I yes, cannot presume you guarantee. You won't make it for quorum purposes, but you'll try and make it if you can. But that's that yeah. may be a challenge there because then we're if we're down. I can, do it. I can I can do it on the seventh. I'm okay too. I guess the only question, the only comment is that let's just make sure that 
that the folks have an idea of you know that what it is we ask them for on that on that house you know in terms of the garages is yes that we'll definitely have that addressed okay at that time but it did you, you sounded tonight like you do you hadn't really didn't feel that you had good feedback so you've got it i now? think yes earlier before we didn't but now knowing that we can just set that garage slightly back and other things forward you know helps a lot we didn't we didn't realize that before okay so i think i'd like to to see if lauren can make it there too then to make sure we've got more covered in case. Lauren anymore she's resigned she did resign yeah we just okay. need four right yeah yeah so we got we would have me you marge and and david okay we could do that for the seven. Just time. a reminder that four is an even number for voting. We'll if it's target. that contentious, then it's I'm All okay right, with then, that. Then it's due, then it then it should fail. Yeah. Right. It's a say very it. fair point, Mary Kay. We appreciate that, Nate. Um mm -hmm. and and the uh and you will be billed for this, Lance. Yep, that's fine. So 6.30 via Zoom on the 7th. Uh, Bo, can we have a conversation uh, lunch that day? Yeah. On the same page? Yep. Thank you. Okay, so there, is there a motion to table until Thursday, October 7th at 6.30? So moved. Motion by Schmitz, second by Grutzmacher, is that correct? Yes. All those in favor respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would recommend to staff to table number five. What, what page is number five even on? Um, 237, I believe. Okay, yep. Okay, and then uh, item agenda six is on what page? 261. Okay, item number six, discussion regarding the terms of the approved conditional use permit that was issued to James Selinski for the property located at 10592 Highway 57 as unanticipated issues arose when he was attempting to move the home that is on the property to another parcel in the village. Jim? Hi, thanks for staying up late. <laughs> Appreciate this, Bill. A long meeting. Um, stay up for just another five minutes. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, not looking to change the terms or anything. Just kind of wanted to bring you up to date on what's happening with this. Um, as you know, the whenever you're looking to move a building, they have to fit underneath the, the different communication mm -hmm. lines and the power and the power lines. Um, and there's from top to bottom WPS and then Frontier. No. Uh, Charter and then Frontier. Anyway, um, long story short, they gave us three different costs at three different heights. Uh, and it, if we go, if we went full height, it was about ninety thousand dollars. If we reduced the height uh, to twenty three feet, it was about sixty four k, and then twenty feet is about forty thousand dollars. So uh, we chose to pick one where we were doing some work on the house. In other words, removing about four to five feet of the house, and, and that was the middle of the road cost around fifty to sixty four thousand. Um, and in so doing, we took off, and I don't know if you drove by, you know, about four feet of the house, of the roof. Um, Notice that some of the stove wood walls were unstable. If you, if you look inside, you know, it was one of these hand-built houses and the, the, the studs are kind of like literally like this, where one's going upwards and it's not even stick built, it's sort of like, I don't know, partially built. Anyway, the long story short is that um, the feeling was it might not, um, survive the move and uh -huh. um this is the house not the granary or the cottage and um as well as having to rebuild it the whole project land and so on would be i'd be into it for like over three hundred thousand, which would be um might be tough to make it pay off 
um, which is what you know the, the plan was to, to sell it. So um, I'm looking at doing like a, a partial, uh, well, not partial, like a disassembly of it. I mean, the, the condition was to sell, move, or repurpose. And so whatever I can repurpose, I will, but just sort of a, a heads up um, on the house. The cottage is, is hoping to be moved next week, the granary building. Uh, we just have to uh, arrange a date with the, the mover. So, you know, that's it. Just kind of wanted to um, let everybody know what what the situation there is in case you see some, you know, some major work going on. Okay, yeah. thank you for updating us. Um, I can't remember specifically uh, what the wording was in your development agreement, Jim. Um, uh, with this change, does it affect anything in that development agreement, Bo? Um, I don't believe it does. Okay, I want to. I want a for sure answer. It said it either, had, either had to be repurposed or moved. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Thank you. And, and also, Rob had said before what a pleasure it was uh, to work with me. And I just wanted to say the same thing throughout this whole process. We have been going on it for a long time, collaborating back and forth. And I didn't say thank you last time. So I wanted to say thank you now. So thanks. Very everyone. nice. Thank you. All right. Item number seven discussion regarding your request from Todd for zoning that the plan commission review and approve the wetland delineation, which has been done for his property that has been assigned an address of 10674 North Bayshore Drive and a parcel number of 18100531284 g one Bo? Yep. So staff did receive the uh, delineation request. Um, we did contact the DNR just to get some more information about the process and what would need to be done on their end. Um, it does look like Scott Taylor. If you look at the report on that second page in, he is WDNR Assured Wetland Delineator. Um, so when I showed that to the DNR, they said that they don't have any other further uh, approval process on their end if he's an assured de delineator. Uh, <coughs> following in, in the packet is the reports for you to review and, and make a motion on. So we're just make a, making a motion to accept it? Correct. And for what purpose do we, why are we doing that? Uh, it's on the, on the call or on the meeting if you want to ask. Uh, yeah, the purpose is just because the wetlands change location. Uh, so you're just approving that it's the same guy that did my delineation last time. Okay. Redelineated it, and one wetland is no longer there. The other one moved slightly. So yeah, I saw the one where you, the last time we talked a hundred years ago, you know, that there was going to be a driveway issue. That's the one that went away. Right. Yep. Nice. Nice. How, how convenient. Yeah. Do something cool. quick before it changes again. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. I'll make a motion to accept. Motion by Berto. Denise, you have to make a motion that the board recommend that a resolution be approved approving that plat. Because that that's what I said, approved. Janelle. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I misunderstood you. <laughs> I seconded. <it. laughs> One more thing to add here. That is a really, really good title. Delineator. <laughs> I love it. I like it. Sounds very powerful. <laughs> All. all those in favor respond with an aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Carried. Funny. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Good luck with whatever you're doing. Uh, agenda number eight, report by the zoning administrator regarding development activities, various enforcement actions, and issuance of sign and zoning permits. Does anyone have any questions for me? Let's keep it short. Well, uh, okay. So I think everybody on the plan commission knows that that you are that you are um, moving on to um, bigger and better things. <clears throat> and uh, so I guess I know that you know from the village, from the board standpoint, you you have been making a list of kind of loose ends and and whatever. And I was just wondering, have you done that also um, for plan commission? Like I was wondering what has happened with goose and twigs and their dumpster? 
Yes. So I have all of that information compiled in a report. It's not just board information, but it's plan commission information. It's where are we at with projects that people have approached me? Where, where do they stand? Where are they going to be? Any active enforcement that still needs to be followed up on, that's all going to be included in that. Okay. Where are we with Goose and Twigs? Um, I can give you the last email update. He sent me a letter from the constructor. Let's see. Okay. Because I think the last time we talked about it, if they didn't have it done by whatever it was, they were supposed so to start tip. being fined. So, and you made me follow up on that. So he said that I have a, a letter and the, the contract for the custom fence work to be done. They're so far back that they are, I'm trying to look for the date that he had on here. So he had it signed in July 30th to complete the work. It was approved and accepted. And they had supply chain issues for the work that needs to be done. I'm just looking for the date. I believe it was by October. Let's see. <laughs> so it, he has from the custom fence incorporated mid-october says six weeks to install but you can see there's been supply chain issues it should be completed by mid-october okay and i sent you a couple of pictures i don't know this week last week whenever it was when i actually got out of the bubble of sister bay um have those people been contacted about their illegal sign yes and if they're not gone um i will have them removed okay um and speaking of signs on september 20th um uh true green was here um fertilizing and there were no signs put up at marina park i will talk to the parks team thank you those were the only questions i had anybody else so Why? can i just ask what happens with goose and twig if if we go past the next two weeks which is the middle of october at that point in time is if, if there isn't something in progress, is a fine automatically assigned? I mean, th this has been going on for years. It's ridiculous. I'm oh, over how is it. I don't understand how them not getting it in by the fifth didn't, you know, didn't equate to them getting a fine. I'm Okay, so from my perspective as a zoning administrator, and I you have to remember, I'm trying to enforce, but still at the same time, try to be well aware of the current climate and condition when it comes to supply chain management. I mean, this isn't the only project that's seeing delays upon delays, not to mention a work shortage. I mean, the guy can't install that himself or doesn't feel comfortable installing that himself. That's just my perspective. So if you guys feel thus is necessary, let's put the fist down. I will put the fist down, but I'm trying to work with business owners in the village. We will wait until the middle of October and it will not be your issue anymore, Bo. You're a softy, Denise. <laughs> Because you know I have the hammer, <laughs> and, and to be blunt, I don't think he ever ordered the the gates. I have the order right here. I have the contract signed. After he did the rest of it, no, I have the I have the literal gate. It's a separate order. Okay. He did that. He made that order back in July. Right, but that was back in July after he had been notified for like a year that it needed to be done. Oh, don't put yourself in a place to advocate for somebody who's upsetting your committees because that's what you're doing right now. You should just throw them under the bus because it's their doing, not yours. Can, can I ask why Why are the, the, the dumpsters, I just walked up to the hardware store yesterday through the door hotel. There's four dumpsters behind the the, uh, the 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 bowl and the cellcom building they're not fenced are they grandfathered in or something no that has that should have been addressed months ago is that on your list Bo? where are we with that <laughs> that probably fell off my list okay so it's sort of hard to be 
me, you know, hammer one guy when you're letting some others slide by. I'm a one man army here on enforcement. So, you know. Oh, I know. And please, I don't mean I think it's easy, but I just mean, you know, you've got to be, we've got to be consistent in and what we're insisting on. You know, make, I think a phone call and a, a and a reminder uh, needs to be shared um, with uh, the Sister Mabel tomorrow. And CELCOM. Well, I don't know if it's CELCOM as much as it's Jerry Sabalas. Okay, yeah. well, whomever it is. Who's the owner of the business. They own the building, don't they? Yeah. 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 Well. Oh, I have to go out of town this weekend. I'm really going to miss you. I want to thank you for your service and your lovely parting gift, which I give to all of the people that leave us in the ZA position will be either in the mail or dropped off at the apartment from the Shumway First family. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is that it? All right, I will make a motion to adjourn at 9.08, motion by Berto. Second. Second by Gretzmacher. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you for everybody's hard work. Much appreciated. Thank you. Good night, Good night. everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.